It's your turn to be the Game Master. How do you keep all the lore, monsters, and treasures straight? Introducing the Beetle and Grimm's Game Master's Journal. Start by choosing your cover art, add text to remind you why you play, then plan your adventures with over 200 pages for character backstory, encounters, session logs, and more. When the campaign is over, you'll have a record of your character's bravery, cowardice, or both. Mm, probably both. And the what was that? What was that? Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear weird noises then. There's a intro sound effects. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Dave here, Band of Badgers. Welcome. Uh, this is our Dragonlance campaign. We're going to get into this fairly, 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 fairly quickly, but just wanted to catch oh, yeah. up with everyone because it's been four weeks since we've been here. A lot happened. Do we all remember what happened? Quick recap. <clears throat> Anybody? Throw yourselves in the ring. So, Jeff, so Jeff. Jeff. Jeff dead, yeah. Jeff yeah. dead, yep. Jeff's dead. And, then, and there was a secret door with the guy from the front secret cover of the door. Dragon Lance book. We got the Terminator Lich thing. King. Pretty sure he was da -da, butt naked. Da -da. Yep. <laughs> um, he, he was just sporting the helmet. <laughs> this is going to say it. Which one? It was, like, it was a good one. <laughs> yes, Mr. We, we had, like, ghost evil dude <clears throat> who was possessing people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we accidentally killed the Gutu who was possessed oh, by the ghost. All of the council is dead. That's an important one. Most importantly, yeah, though, we got yeah. back Mr. Randy Alvarenga, and I've never been more excited for a game. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, so, yeah, we've got uh, Randy is back again. Uh, how you doing, Randy? How's your week? I see you. Just, just, just show the chest. Oh, you got, yeah. You got the Harbingers. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So I am getting ready. It's you guys. This season is going to be fun. Uh, so this is season three coming up, uh, September eighth, uh, in the evenings. So you can catch us over on Gone Rogue Entertainment, which is Megan Ca Caves Callerman's channel. We've yeah. uh, already the show is done. It's it's edited. It's uh, we shot it live in uh, in California. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. I'm cool. Woo! That picture That's what I'm today was so good. Like, yeah, my character was revealed insane. today. My character was revealed, y'all. I've been like unable to talk about this character for so long. He's <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, Savage Worlds has this like thing called a librarian, where like books give you magic, and you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like just like any kind of like random book, and <clears> with, <throat> that's tied to emotion. So like, I was able to do some cool stuff with that. So. Check it out. <laughs> you don't want it. No spoilers. I, I was like, I was, I was like getting really excited. I was like, I got it. Right it's about to go down spoiler lane. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian, what's up with you? What's happening? Hey, so I want to do a little bit of a self plug, a little bit of a, a thing, because over on twitch.tv, Dragonborn Industries, I'm going to put that into the chat so that people can go and follow if they want. We've yeah. got a giveaway going on, and you can win. So far, we had four prizes, and today I revealed another the two which are these here Ooh. so we've got the neon blossom chomp which is the prototype and the matching dice tree for it we've got a set of gelatinous cube that dice one. which dave has got and also a matching dice tree for that we've got a little bridge that we've now yeah. been adding uh, terrain to the store and this and this dragon here oh my god richard from warrior prince 3d donated this to the giveaway for his hitting affiliate on twitch and mm -hmm. I am super excited because, like, he's get made, he's magnetized every head, so you can take off each one of the Hydra heads as you defeat them, or yep. you can take off the entire Ritty of the top and replace it with a single-headed dragon if you so want to. And there is still one more item to be added to the giveaway, which will be live on Monday night at eight o'clock. Twitch.tv forward slash Dragonborn Industries, which I will be self-promoting in the chat, so feel free to go along. You have to be following to enter, and we're going to have a, a keyword in chat that if you use that keyword you'll be entered in and it's open to everybody worldwide we will ship this fan wherever you are middle of the ocean we'll ship it <laughs> on the moon oil oh, oh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so amongst all, 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 all our wonderful players and everything else that they're doing um just to shout out uh one of our supporters 
And along the street is Beedle and Grimms. Be oh, wonderful, Beedle. wonderful, wonderful Beedle and Grimms. Because we are playing, you can't see it, it's behind me, it's in the background, you don't be able to see it, but we are playing their um, their steel edition of Dragon Lance, which looks something a little bit like this. Now you get all that of dragon. these goodies in this box set, and I, it, although this, is the, this isn't a platinum edition, this is a smaller edition, a steel edition, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely worth checking it out. <sighs> right, do we think we are good to go i think so go. yes say goodbye oh, jeff oh i was gonna say well I was, I was just missed one there we go and also you saw hey. the trailer oh, <laughs> there's the beer games game master journal uh, which i've been busy filling it in um so if you want to see what else i don't know uh, i can't really put too much on because then the players will will, will cheat um and so i'm just keeping it secret but uh yeah we, we got that going on as well um so check out um check that out that's cool. Right. Is everybody warmed up now? Are we ready to get back into this? Ready to go. Hell yeah. Let's uh um, let's do it. Let's uh let's roll VT. Yeah. Let's see if we can get straight into this, if we can. Hawk, at the end of last session, you were pretty much crushed um, to death by some falling debris <coughs> from the roof of this chamber that everyone is in, the council chamber. And you know when you're, if you experience this, or if anyone experiences this, when you're fast asleep and you can hear someone enter the room or call your name, it's like you're aware but you're somewhere else. Anyone have that feeling? Anyone aware of that? And then you kind of get we, 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 sucked we, back we into your kids. body. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> what are you doing? You exactly. Think... That, that peaceful sleep, where peaceful sleep gets get dis gets disturbed. So, Hawk, you hear a distant yet somehow familiar voice of a woman, almost angelic. And she is calling out your name. Flynn. Flynn. And as you open your eyes, you're laying on the floor. You see the face of a familiar blue-skinned elf, which is quite close to yours. If you remember, this is the elf that you met very, very briefly back in Vogler. Mm. Oh, uh I know your face. What's going on here? It is good to see you again, Flynn, but your fight isn't over. She brushes the hair out of your eyes and you suddenly feel a wash of energy come all over you. It's cold at first, like a cold shower, but very, very refreshing. And as you feel your wounds heal, then you notice Bakaris is moving in, imperceptibly slowly. And that rubble from the broken ceiling above is still s slowly drifting down to the ground, almost like, uh, like a gentle snowfall. It's quiet and serene. And she leans in even closer to you, almost cradling your head. 
and she says, my name is Ladara, and I died during the cataclysm more than 300 years ago. I was once an elven priest, but I witnessed my companion and fellow priest, Isold, drawn into the grim fate of the wicked knight of Solumnia. His name is Lord Loren Soth. When Soth failed his God's given quest to prevent the cataclysm, he became cursed to exist forever as a death knight. As part of his curse, I and several of my companions returned as deathless spirits devoted to ensuring Soth never finds peace again. I have spent centuries tormenting Lord Soth in his accursed castle called Dargard Keep, endlessly reminding him of his failures and losses. Now that the Dragon Queen has summoned Soth, I work to stymie the Death Knights however I can. And that's where you come in. What, 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 what can I do? I'm, I'm but a mere fighter. I no special. I'm not special. Flynn, you are someone who can take action. You are someone who goes against the grain. You are someone who, unbeknownst to you, are chosen by the gods. But, but I need to tell you what's coming ahead and you need to listen closely. When the Knights of Solomnia held Castle Calaman, the structure was more than a fortress, it was a temple beneath which the fallen knights were entombed in a place of honour. During the cataclysm, there were waves of divine, uh, uh, waves of divine energy uh, raged across the land. And while the flames receded following the disaster, in a few cursed places, this cataclysmic fire remained. One such place is the catacombs contained in a tomb of the knight named Salamir. He is buried beneath this castle. Now the Knights of Salomnia, they locked these tombs away and when others later took control of the castle, the catacombs were sealed entirely. Now I believe that Lord Soth has come to these catacombs following the Dragon Queen's will. Is that here where, where I fell? It is. It is beneath this castle. In just, tombs just in the before, mountain. Just before I blacked out, I remember seeing like this great ghostly knight. I'm guessing that was Lord Soth. You are correct. So he's searching for something in the catacombs. And you have to beat him to it. Okay. Um... I, as I said, I'm, I don't believe I'm anyone special, but I will do my best. I will give you my word, my honour. It's the only thing I have. And my it code. is the only thing we wish from you, Flynn. Now, among the dead entombed beneath Castle Calaman lies the body of this knight, Zanas Salamir. He was once a respected knight of the Order of the Crown. Salomar received a divine quest from the god Paladin years before the cataclysm. Paladin told him the king priest of Ishtar had created a magical wonder in the east, which is a flying city. And in so doing, the king priest had enraged the metallic dragons that had long remained hidden on Kryn. Paladin tasked Salomir with going to this flying city, a surging the dragon's fury and convincing the king priest to return the city to the land. Salomir agreed. The knight knew his task was daunting and decided to hedge his bets. He took his family's greatest treasure with him. It is an ancient dragon lance. Mm. Now Salomir and his fellow knights reached the king, priest, king priest's flying city and stood before a flight of righteously furious metallic dragons. 
Now, when the king priest refused to land the flying city, the dragons refused to leave. As the conflict escalated, Salomir used his dragon lance to slay the dragon's leader. The leader was the gold dragon, Caravarix. As soon as Caravarix's blood touched the dragon lance, the weapon rushed away in Knight Salomir's hand. The dragons attacked, slaying Salomir and crashing the flying city. Now a handful of Salome's loyal knights escaped and they brought his body and his cursed dragon lance back to Calaman. Both were interned beneath the city, which is where they still remain. Lord Sof does not know this, but I fear he is here for other reasons, but may be lucky in unearthing this hidden dragon lance. So, so he's not after the dragon lance, but you worry he might find it. Correct. Okay. So, mm -hmm. right. Looking for looking for something, but it's not the dragon lance. But if we find, if we, if I was to find the dragon lance with my companion, would that help us defeat yes. Lord Self? It would. Ha it would help in your fight against the growing urge of dragon armies this is just your first step okay and she looks suddenly she looks up um her face kind of tightens uh in in urgency she goes i fear he is close to his goal you must hurry on and she says as she points to the shattered door that you saw at the rear of the chamber the secret beneath this castle one is is one the old lord can't be allowed to possess and with that you blink and she's oh. gone oh. oh and then time seems to reassert itself within the chamber you see bakara start to kind of turn around you remember uh, the body of a knight who caradoc had possessed is still impaled into the blackboard and we're back into into that area there was also laying on the floor was a scroll that Caradoc um, was carrying. Um, am I still laying down on the floor? You can get up now. It's fine. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, I sit bolt upright and I go, Bacarus! <laughs> oh, muted. Mute. Sorry. Oh. Can you clarify this for me, Dave? I turn around. The ceiling is collapsing. I think it's going to hit him. Does it hit Flynn? Oh no! It it already hit him. This is just the now, is just, just the, the after, after rubble. Okay. So then, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm sort of digging, and I'm like, don't 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 worry. We we're, we're here. Uh, uh, he, do we have any healers? Any one who can? Uh, Grom. Uh, I, uh, I I I think I'm all right. I think. It. <clears throat> I'll 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 rush over. Put my arms like kind of around uh, Hawk. Hawk, are, are you okay? How do you feel? Uh, uh, I, I saw someone, Grom. You're gonna feel I'm absolutely mental. I saw a blue elf woman, and she told me a tale about the big night thing that teleported in. He's looking for something underneath the castle. We, we can't let him find it. We have to stop him. And Just... there's also a tale about a dragon lance. And oh, oh my God, my head is spinning. Yeah, just just sit, uh, sit, sit down. I'll, I'll, somewhat dis I'll somewhat dismiss him for for a moment. Just 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 sit sit down. Sit down. Take it. Take I know it, it sounds crazy, Grom. I know it sounds crazy, but we we gotta go. We've got to go now and stop we... that night. <laughs> We can, we cannot follow. We cannot follow after that. What do you? We, we don't have a choice. Crushed. We have to follow. We have to. We have to do it. That, that creature is here. clearly That's here for long. something. It knew that it knew the secret door was there. there. There's something down there because secret doors are only there to protect whoever's hidden behind them. It um, knew Dave, it was am there. I, am I right in thinking that I'm actually healed, but I'm still sort of covered in rubble? Yeah. 
Yeah, you're covered in yeah. the dust to roll so, some small scatter bricks. Grom, if you're, if so you're inspecting him like a medic, you can see there's blood, but there's no wound. Shilin's yeah. already walking over to that crushed okay. door. I, I push off head. everything and I just jump up and I say, Pekoris, come on! We need to go! Wait, wait. Uh, we need a strategy. But, uh, and you see Bakaris hold his hand up. Derek, Derek, I need you to gather a group to secure the grounds of the castle. We're going into the catacombs after this guy. You see Derek kind of a bit surprised by you having now being more commanding. Um, and he's like, yes, sir. Um, at once. And he, he hurries out of the, the council chamber. Remember, there was a few guards coming into the room anyway. He starts organising them and he kind of disappeared. And um, I tell them that the knight's name, I said, the, the knight's name, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. He, he's called Lord Soth. And he's he's after something, but we can't let him find anything under here. We, I don't know what he's after exactly, but... I, I know there's like about a dragon, dragon lance and stuff, but yeah, it's not that. That's not here. But if he finds what is here <clears> under <throat> this castle, we are all doomed. We cannot let him find it. Then we. Uh, uh, there's we'll pick up the scroll and then look. For yeah. It. Who's, uh, who's uh, grabbed the scroll? Fizz. Uh, Fizz. I will. Uh, and then I'll so this, be like, this is. Um, you unfurl the scroll, you see this. I'll put it on screen, and then if you can uh, read it out for everyone, that would be <clears> handy. In your best voice. <laughs> it's, it's definitely in your best voice. Hold on, there we go. I guess it's like as you guys are like chatting and like um, Shilling's over the way on the way to the secret door. He's like, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a there's a letter. People of Calaman, I exert my rightful claim as ruler of the province province of Nightland. Submit or flee, Lord Lawrence Soth. Knight of the Rose. We, we can't. We it's, can't it's, let him get any it's, it, it's Lord Soth. And, and anyone with the first name Lauren, you can't trust him. <laughs> I mean, it's just that way. Work. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he would pull up the paper and just drop it on the floor and like cock his um, crossbow that is now one of like the main things you see him use. Uh, and he's like, we have to stop him. Whatever he is. Agreed. I, I, I York, we've got to go. Yes, I agree, but we, we need a strategy. Look, we, we're all taking we need hits. York. We're all low on 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 abilities and power. Yeah, you know, we've already we've already fought our way to this point. Agreed. Yeah. We need to follow that guy carefully. Normally, like the armory on the Isle of Sandcrest, that is well protected by uh, armor golems that are, that are stored within. There may be traps in there. This this creature, this Lord Lauren Soth, knew about this room. He may know a way to subvent the traps and subvent whatever other security is within the catacombs below the castle. I suggest our best course of action is to follow his footsteps, but quickly so we capture him. We need our best trackers up front, which I'm going to guess is Shilling and, and Flynn. Yep, Shilling is... Yep. Yep. That's why I'm yep. checking for traps by door already. She's just poking around, kind of seeing, you know. You're checking for traps. Yep. You've got right. How many? How many yep. healing potions do we have amongst us? Uh, that's I, got any question, um, I, I have a question, Dave. Would I know where the council keeps any healing potions that I can? Uh, healing potions are very, very rare. Okay. So it's more a case of mm. um, so healing potions as they might exist in Dragonlance were pre cataclysm there's no um Ooh, uh, there's no priestly clerical healing magic or stuff that can be bottled but there are medicines okay. same as there are me medic kits and healing healing aids bandages that kind of stuff uh can I, I, I have can nothing I, can i get some of those for for the party before we head uh, out you're not you're not going to find you know. any in the okay. castle again these are like wine bottles they would be Got it. A cork bottle waxed, covered in dust, if you ever do find some. Okay. Yeah, because I'm only, I've got quite low HP. Well, relatively low. Can we take a short rest? I thought we bought some back before in the city, we yeah. head into this dungeon. We, 
we don't have time. If we need to follow, then yeah. giving him this much time. Uh, I mean, I, I, Wait, I'm hurt. Um, he's seen, like holding his slide and stuff, but he's like, but we can't. We Krom, can't. All right. Krom, Krom, I don't know much about gods. Um, I only believe in the god of luck, but you know, is there any way you could maybe pray to your god and ask for some sort of group healing or something? Or I don't know, just some sort of bless blessing of a group that might help us. I don't know. Well, it's a uh, it's a possibility. So I'll drop <clears throat> I'll drop to uh, Every, everybody get together. Comes yeah. Back. Um, <laughs> let's see here. It's like hand in hand in like that. She yeah. had healing. She's there. <laughs> Help me. So, yeah, I'll get... Hang on one second. <laughs> Of course, if this was BG3, we'd just put a healing potion in the middle of us and then hit it. And hit it. Just throw it. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it. <laughs> get the splash back. You know that's going to get a reply <laughs> right. on YouTube. Every, every step we've taken, every foot on the path that we've taken to get to here, we've relied only on ourselves and the idea that we need to do our duty when it is required. If this is the last action that we take, we still have to take it. As you said, Flynn, we have no choice. If this creature finds what is below this castle in these catacombs, World. it spells doom not just for us, but for everyone. If we have to sacrifice our lives to prevent that from happening, then that is what we will have to do. Yep. I know that's not Mr. very comforting where we stand now, but we do not have a choice. We just need to find what is within us and take that last and next step forwards. That's, that's and I will attempt. Place, so at, I will attempt to use my inspiring leader feat to give everyone eight temporary hit points. Aww. If if Dave allows well, that, it, I will allow that. That's fine. As well. And um, okay, York, as you say that and come to the end, and, and you uh, use that inspiring leader, uh, Fizz looks at you and says, uh, "Esolaris of Mythas." Solaris Othmethas Fizz. And with that, that inspires me. I drop to a knee. Is everybody crowded around me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at first, I'll start to like mumble in a language you don't understand, and I'll be kind of like scratching just like with my finger, sort of on the is it wood, wood floors or stone or? Uh, it's all stone. Okay, on like on the stone. So maybe there's a little bit of dust on the stone where you're seeing yeah, like you the symbols sort of appear, right? And then the symbols will, <clears throat> at first, you, they're just like kind of dust on the on the stone. And then I'll say in in common, Kiri, bestow your power on us that we may go into this crypt and and know that you're watching down help us and all of a sudden the the script on the stone floor will start to glow blue <clears throat> a pulse will come up from it and I'll cast third level aid Ooh. So I need to know who's the furthest down. Three of you are going to get max. Your hit points are going to go up by 10, and you're going to get 10 hit points. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> I'm on about okay. half. I'm, I don't need I'm okay. Any. I'm on 16 out of 43. Okay, so Shilling, you take 10. Oh. Bakaris, you take 10. Who needs the final 10? If not, I'll take it. Uh, you take I, it. How about you? Because, yeah, how about you? Okay. <clears throat> that takes your max up 10 as well just if something would happen that would boost us I, so I don't think okay, it's going to happen cool. but... okay. right, as soon as that's um, dissipated the, the sort of glow is dissipated Flynn jumps up and he goes Yorg, you said we need a plan of attack I have a plan 
attack, attack. and he runs off towards the <laughs> and he runs off towards the door where the knight went to. As he goes as he goes into the distance, I'll just shout, Remember we have to track him to avoid the traps. Yep, I've oh, checked for traps, they're all twenty two, so hopefully <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, you check you check for traps on the doorway. So to give you an idea, yeah. the door uh, the door frame is sculpted <clears throat> with these uh, somber knights that stands in an alcove along the corridor. Mm -hmm. uh, the door frame uh, was once sealed, but it's been shattered bricks now mm -hmm. lie across the floor and down into this uh, this area. Mm -hmm. Beyond the opening, you see a steep flight of stairs descends below ground or below floor mm -hmm. level and at the very bottom you see uh, a violet glow a violet light and the sound of crackling flames trying to seem to kind of emanate from up from below no so we get the, towards you... the stairs i grab a shield from the floor and then i put it down like a skateboard and i go down the stairs no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Just careers into a um, um, Yeah, I'm going to bound off to the door. I wait at the doorway so I can see what you've just described. And, yeah. I, and I turn around to the others and I just say, Come on, guys, we've got to go. Bakaris is right behind you and Shilling. Yeah. Okay, so. Shilling's following very quickly. So fl Flynn up front, Shilling behind. We're not checking for traps, we're just going to follow the guy. I don't mm -hmm. think we have time to, to check for traps, so just try and get us to walk in his footsteps. Uh, Bakaris yeah. is after Shilling. I'll be after Bakaris. Uh, I suggest, Fizz, you take the back because you have a, a long-range weapon. We'll, 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 we'll do. Okay. <clears throat> I'm in the middle of the pack. Now, to add to that, I would say you've got your tokens on the battle map. Start getting yourselves organised. Is it uh, quite light down there, or do we need... Uh, yeah, is it quite light down there, or do we need um, light? You're going to find out. Uh, so there's a violet <laughs> light shining below. Now, the vision. stairs descend... Um, those of you who are, who are at the front, the stairs descend into quite a large stone chamber, and it's engulfed in these violet flames. Think, um, you know, like, uh, like holographic projections, but all in violet colour. Uh, the fire, uh, in the fire, stand four dignified statues of knights of Solomnia. Oh. And at the east end of the room lies an antechamber before a stone double door. Now, the fifth statue depicts a bison-headed warrior. Now, for what I'm going to do is open this up for you. Bison. Let's see if I can bring this across. So, so if um, can can we see okay. the um, Terminator Knight guy, Lord yeah. Sock? <laughs> ah, okay. So, but we can see the door. You can see the door. Yeah, <clears throat> he's not in here. Well, that's good. He's yeah. also a Death Knight. I feel like walls no. aren't necessarily. Stopping for him. <laughs> I just, just would have thought you would have left the door open. Fair. <laughs> got very good hinges. So, uh, Hawk and Shilling, you're going to see this first because you're, according to the way that you've put your tokens, yep. you are both entering the room. Yeah. Now, these violet flames, which are all around the room, start to move and oh, you see man. them almost start to float as if in water and they start to make uh, patterns ahead of you. And then those patterns turn into people. And you start to realize that it's like a theater. It's making a scene in Ooh. front of you. Ooh. And what you okay. see is a knight of Solumnia um, saves a group of elf travelers from a bunch of ogre raiders. And an elf woman falls into the knight's arms. Behind him though, is a silhouette of a human woman who turns away who, who turns from him and fades away and as that scene plays out the rest of you start to walk into the chamber so only you two have seen it from start to finish mm -hmm. the flames just 
go back and to start burning around the room. Does Shillin recognise this as a famous sort of story, maybe sort of elf, not nursery rhyme, but elf tale she may have heard? Uh, do a history check. Okay. History. First roll of the session. Oh, that's a four. Oh, you know. 44. <laughs> I wish. Four. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. Shillin was away for that lesson. Um, <laughs> she was on holiday. Right. So, Hawk sees that, um, ignores it, and runs straight forward into the round chamber. Uh, can I and then look... after Hawk runs after him as well, and he's like, for God's sake, what's he doing? Can I look and see if this statue turns or anything, if there are markings on the floor? You can investigate, yeah. Yeah, let's try some investigation. Can you, can you try and look for Lord Soft's tracks to see where he went? Yeah. See where he's walked? Yeah. That was it, soft, not soft. And while he's doing that, Dave, does the bison-headed statue look anything like my emblem that I'd be yes, wearing? it does. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. As, after he does that, I'd like to approach that statue. All right. Yep. Yep, you instantly recognize it as Kirijana. Okay, and which one is that? Which statue is that? That's one in the round antechamber. Okay, up there. Okay, so what I'll move my way level? in there then and come up to that statue. Yep. A 21 investigate. Um, you go all around the statue. There are no kind of... Uh, that you can discern. There are no moving parts or hidden compartments. Okay. Any tracks of uh, uh, so uh, Lord Saw? I think at this point it's quite obvious that some big heavy boots <laughs> have trodden in. Uh, they've marched directly in a straight line from the stairwell around the statue of Kirijalith and through the doors. Okay. Well, I've gone around the statue and I'm standing in front of the door. Can I see any way to open the door? Um, yeah, it, it has it has in out. <laughs> it's a push. <laughs> there's, there's, it's, no does it say push. push on it? I try pulling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'll try yeah, and push it or pull it open, whichever. She didn't slightly untrusty trustworthy this door. It looks too uh, easy to get through, but she'll let him do it. <laughs> She's like, well, if, if people need, I, I, can that cast, you know this. I can cast detect magic, but uh, it's, I'm pretty tapped for Arcana. It's going to be one of the last bigger spells I can do. Um, but if it means that we can get through safely without any magic traps or anything, then I'm willing to do it. As long as we know that the guys walk through here, then I think we're, we're, we're safe. Let's work on that assumption until something else happens. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what I was thinking. As they're okay. whining around me, I'm going to walk right up in front of the the front of the statue. How how tall does it stand? Oh, this is big. These are, these are like nine foot tall statues. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look up. Oh, well, there you are. Just and I'll pull, I'll pull the emblem out. And I'll, I'll touch the emblem to the statue. You can see that um, on the, the, the figure uh, at the base of the statue, there is um, a kind of like a, a round indent. Oh, really? Okay, then if I notice that, um, well, at first I'll, I'll touch I'll touch the emblem to the statue, just more symbolically from the perspective of like the connection. Yep. And as I look down, I'll see this indentation that will look like about the size of the the medallion. Yep. So I'll I'll go ahead and take it off my neck, and I'll I'll set it I'll set it down onto it. Does it fit? It does. It seems Ooh. to um, fit very very comfortably. Uh, almost clicks as you you put it in. But nothing seems to happen. Does it turn at all? Or is it just solid? No, so you it has a lip as you've put the medallion into it. And you turn it... Uh, do you want to go clockwise or anti-clockwise? Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Choices, choices, <laughs> left or right. I punch it. Yeah. Um... What is it we always used to say? I'd I'd want to go. Um, it was always turn left, but it. 
Yeah, that's where yeah, I want to always. That, that's for directions. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna. <laughs> mm. Everything. I was thinking if we're turning a key, it's right in it. Yeah, it's a lock. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's unlock. Yeah. It's left. Yeah, if it, if it's a lock. So. Or join uh, the Maverick and just go right anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm, I have a reason why I'm gonna go left. So I, I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn it left. Okay. You turn it uh, about a quarter turn, and it clicks and it it stops. Uh, and while you're holding um, the medallion, you feel uh, a slight surge of, of uh, like pins and needles travel up your through your fingers into your hand and up to your arms. Like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> do, do I get any uh, anything else? Just like a hit. You get that, like a... Uh, that, that's all the feeling you get. But what I will tell you is your healing spells have been recharged. So anything Ooh. which is beneficial to the players that's has good. been recharged. Okay. Oh, I thought it was beneficial to the players. Yay! <laughs> all right. That might come in helpful. Yes. Oh my God, does it? <laughs> so I'll, kind of, I'll hit We're that. We're gonna be all right. And, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of take a moment and I almost I almost have a little bit of a emotional reaction when this happens because there it, it it's almost like there's such a flow of energy mm -hmm. that has come directly in and through me like from this entity right it's different than what I've experienced when you know asked and, and, and received sort of the power it's like the power is flowing directly through into me so you'll 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 see grom almost kind of choke up a little bit in knowing what has just happened um and i'll, I'll just kind of drop down and thank you thank you for watching over us and then i'll try to rem I feel like I, I'll, I'll try to remove the medallion and, and take it back. Yep. The medallion just comes out and you can put it back on. And I'll, I'll put it back over my over my neck. Now, based on where I'm positioned, I guess Bakaris and Fizz may, may have seen this, but I, I will quickly try to like kind of wipe a couple tears away and, <clears throat> you know, and, uh, and I'll get up and I'll walk around the statue. But Karis is, is probably too focused on the door. He's re he's thinking about like going through it, so you're probably fine from him. Lynn, the oh, door. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, just yeah, shouldn't more focus on not dying <laughs> around this door. Yeah, who's going through the door first? It sounds hey. like Hot. Hundred percent Flynn, then me, begrudgingly. Nope. Suffer as I need to. I'll go third again. Third, I'll be behind. I'll be next to you. As I'm and... as I'm running along, I'm not just running along like blindly. I'm looking around as I'm running along, so I am taking into account what scenery there is, as it were. Yeah, Shalin's yeah. also looking very much ahead, kind of scanning just to make sure Flynn doesn't go too far, so she can pull him back just so, in case he gets overzealous. This will keep an eye on behind. So this <clears throat> this chamber is obviously the crypts, uh, crypts, crypts. Uh, this long <laughs> chamber. Crypts. Uh, this long chamber blazes again with violet flame. Uh, the walls are lined with alcoves, as you can see, within which lie bodies wrapped in yellow cloth. There is a brazier rests at the end of the hall. Um, a section of wall has been smashed to the southwest, <clears throat> creating a crude tunnel to the catacombs beyond. And to the southeast stands a closed stone door. <clears throat> so you can see, um, I will remove that one. And basically, as you walk down the chamber, uh, they all. Oh, uh, uh, oh bugger. Uh, you see Flynn to stop in front of that crude tunnel and go, oh, oh, bugger. Oh, where did he, where, which way did he? I look at the floor as I'm sort of like, oh, but where do you go? Where do you go? 
and I'm looking at the floor to see if I can see any footprints in the dust or anything. Yeah. And I roll a 13 on the dice, and I assume it's perception. So uh, here's perception. our footsteps. That's 14. <coughs> here's, you can see these are big footsteps. You'd have advantage on that anyway. Um, yeah. They head through this way. <clears throat> okay. gone so I look at the... Yeah, I look on the floor yeah. and I say, Footprints, that way! Straight from that, that, that <coughs> little tunnel! He's, he's gone through there! How the bloody hell he no. fit through there, I don't know. <laughs> also, while you're doing this, you're, you're looking through the tunnel, uh, Bakaris, because you've mm -hmm. stepped in third, you see that behind Shin and Hawk, the flames start to dance again, and they start to uh, put out another, another theatrical uh, illusion for you. And this time, the knight from the previous vision is cast out from a group of other knights. The scene fades into a wedding between the knight and the elf woman, also from the previous vision. Mm -hmm. And then as that plays out, shoom, the flames just go back to the sides of the walls. Mm -hmm. Did we all see that? Was that just because? Yeah, was she didn't aware? Did she turn around at any point? Or was it when it you ended? Two, she was like, oh. You two were looking at the tunnel. So unless okay. the Paris tells yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, There's no heat these flames, I imagine. Yes. Uh, Hawk. Yeah. I just saw those visions again. Exactly. Whose dragon lance are we looking for? Uh, you, you've got to take into account I was dead when uh, this blue elven woman talked to me. Um, right. I can't remember the name of him. Was but it I Sandemir? do know that the dragon lance was cursed. You may have oh, it, Sandemir. I think I heard you muttering Salamir when you was lying there. I'm not yep. sure. Yep. In your sleep. I, I noticed know... in my notes that no, I'm just... <laughs> I felt like I should be writing it down, but Dave was going so quick, I was like, oh <laughs> There is there is um, far too much information in that scene. Yeah. All right. I have to yeah, give you a bit of background uh, on everything. So yeah. Cool. No, it was great. It was great to hear, but there's no way I was gonna remember the whole thing. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, the uh it, I, I just know that the dragon lance when blood from a dragon touched it it became cursed that's all i remember uh, but that's not here but what is here is going to be the doom of us all if that knight finds it will, will there be anything else here though i mean like i know that a lot of knights are buried with um uh, weapons and armor that are supposedly blessed or you know uh, magically enhanced is it worth uh, and he like, pulls up the necrotic. He's like, "Is it worth checking down there?" And points with it. Oh, Jesus! I... It's not even I'm that dark that I would go grave robbing. Jesus Christ! Well, <laughs> well, not just that. I mean, I maybe there's another way. Maybe maybe we can maybe we can cut it off. I mean, should we follow directly behind, or maybe there's another way? Uh, uh... I have no. no idea what's in this place. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be quicker to... I do think I don't that... I it's going to be quicker to follow him directly or he go knows down we're the on end his of this tail. corridor, maybe. I don't yeah. know. He does know we're, we're following behind him. If, if he's maybe, gone down the maybe tunnel... We shouldn't, maybe we should see if there's another way to where he was going first. Now, maybe we can cut him off. We I don't, don't know. know where he's going. We could waste time mm. if we... Yeah, that's true. The only, the only way we know where he's going is if we follow him. Yeah, but I do agree with Fizz. Our chances Any of help? defeating this guy are increased if we find something else down here to assist us. <laughs> yeah, well, I suggest well, we I split the party. From you. <laughs> I, I agree with I, you. I, su I suggest split we split the party. The party. Um, Ooh. Right. Where there's a will, there's a way, and he takes the hand and points down the corridor. Uh, I will be going that way. I'm going to move down the corridor with Fizz. Yeah, yeah I'll follow. Oh, God, I'll what stay do we do? with Flynn. <laughs> I'll I'm stay here. with Flynn too. All right. Looks right. 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 like we're going Check through the, the tunnel. Along the way. Yeah. Um, Does Shilin notice any strange markings on the walls at all this tunnel? Like anything ominous? Like um, someone like scratching or any nope. signs of 
horrible miss. No. Nope. <laughs> Dave, 19, check 19 investigation checking for traps along the way. Okay. I've got 23 okay. just in case I needed that. And are we That's investigating the crew up front? Are we investigating these tombs as well? Uh, not in any great yeah. detail. If we see a, a weapons rack, then we'll go and look at that. But um, <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not oh, going grave robbing. I think it, the oh, more oh, interested oh, in these... A weapons these... rack in a grave, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the, I mean, like, uh, you know, the... you like, strikes like, like that with their sword on their chest. That, yeah, that's yeah, the kind yeah, of yeah, shit we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and also, whatever plays out in the rest of these scenes, revealing something, possibly. Yeah. I just imagine that all those <laughs> like sarcophagus with, um, <laughs> with stone knights on top, like, so you might find they've got, like, just skeletons in them or something. But anyway, I'm going to bundle it down the uh, makeshift corridor after the night. Oh, yeah. I think Shilling Scream and Kara is coming with me. Yeah. So it's like, you, you okay, out. Flynn? Are you all right getting down this tunnel? <laughs> right. I'm going to split you into team one and team two. Team one is going to be uh, Jorg, Grom, and Fizzwiz, because on my in my head, you're in front. Um, team and two is charge. Hawk, Shilling, and Karis. <laughs> okay. Team one. What do you want to do? Uh, we, we're hightailing it down the corridor, checking yeah. out each of the alcoves as quickly as we can, uh, and then seeing what's around that corner. Obviously, I can see on the map it ends at a door, but you know, yep. that's that's what we do. Yep. I'll check the left. What is what is this thing at the very end in this circular area right here? That, that was a brazier. That's a that's a brazier. Yeah. Not brazier. not a brazier. Not brazier. Get it. Anything in the alcoves? Do you want us to roll anything? What are you actually searching for in the alcoves? Traps? Uh, quick else? glance, looking through to see if there's like weapons like being held by the bodies on top, or like something that's the, like not they just are, the body. Um, they are uh, all wrapped up um, in yellow cloth. It's just yellow because it's it's been stained. Now on the picture, they are some of them are wrapped, um, have illustrated. Like you would do in, like we've seen uh, our old knights in the UK who have been entombed with their, a, a, a statue above their grave, above their, their thing, with a sword in it. This all looks like they have been um, just, there's a shelf here and the bodies have been placed. What Some do mean, have like, weapons. In the UK where it's got a history longer than 200 years. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. So these bodies have been uh -huh. placed here. Uh, in peace and serenity some do have uh, weapons some do have armor or shields it's up to you guys we've got weapons and shields um i suggest we take as many as we can uh no what we're looking for is the head guy's chamber yeah. these these are his foot soldiers these are his little knights we we should oh. leave these guys to rest in peace does it there look will like be something they, they, further in? They, what, does it look like the oh, brazier like has been? Through, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Does it look like what I'm standing in front of has been used anytime recently? No. Like lit not. or anything? No. Okay. Is there any torches on the walls or anything around it? No, there are not. The only thing you've got is all the walls are. The only reason you can see down here is because of this, this violet flame, which is okay. flicking all around the walls. All right. What weapons have they got? It's an assortment of weapons. You pick which body you want to ransack, and I'll uh, tell I'm you. Just in, <laughs> I'm just in this left chamber here where I am. Just uh, what weapons have these guys got on them? Oh, this okay. has gone dark. Are you, you're, get, you're going for it, yeah? <clears throat> so I'm just having a hint just before which weapons I can see. Got to get haunted. Has he yeah, y'all are about to get attacked by dead zombie knights. <laughs> Has has he touched it yet? No, not touched it yet. I just want to see what weapons are on there. Okay, Casual. as you're standing there, I'm gonna look. Desecration of a tomb. Yeah, I'm gonna look over my shoulder. I, I don't have. I I have like a bad feeling about this. Like I'm gonna look over yeah. my shoulder and I'm gonna say, Fizz is gone because oh. he's not in your line of sight. But you can see George, or York. <laughs> yeah. Okay, York, well, he's then, just then, about to open the door. I'll, I'll look over my shoulder and I won't see Fizz, and I'll look at York and I'll say, I don't think we should disturb the bodies. Uh, agreed. We need to find 
the rest of this story and where the, the, the head knight is, whoever is buried here. No, I, I actually think it's going to be real bad if we disturb the bodies. We should not touch the bodies. We, we shouldn't, I agree, we shouldn't touch the bodies. We should not like this either. No, we shouldn't. We, sh- we should just make our way through and watch the rest of this story unfold. As you're saying this, right, the rain outside my window has got absolutely yeah. Same as me, same as me. It's a proper storm. Same it's same. really yeah. eerie that we're doing this and the rain is just something... As, as soon as Fitz mentioned grave robbing, the rain started to hit the window. Yeah. It was like... yeah. And I, I'm going to start walking back towards this direction. Okay. <laughs> I, I am opening the door. Before you start walking, Fizz, uh, what you see is uh, on this. I'm assuming you're doing the one that's directly in front of front of you on your on the left of the map. Yeah, I just want to see before I reach out and touch yep. Faith. I want to um, want to see what they've got see on. He's he's wrapped up in his shroud. Um, uh, he's he's covered in dust and cobwebs and everything else. But there does seem to be uh, something shiny. But he's laying on top of it. Ooh. It could be a dagger. It could be something else, but it could be the edge of a dagger. Or the As I tell my 14-year-old Fizz, you look with your eyes, not with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> good job I've got yeah. somebody else's hands. Take a look at that. Out <laughs> oh! <laughs> not the manky hands, the manky arm. Oh, um, God. Prods. <laughs> Did you, get rid of that? That? Did you get rid of that? No, back that's got to be sticky I, now, isn't no, it? It's like well, when it was the guard was yeah, shaking hands happens. with the guard at the castle caravan. Oh, and yeah. I'm sure you left yeah. it. He, he took it and threw it, threw it away. No, you kept, so, uh, that's kept how it. You I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Fizzwiz is the first time it was off. So Fizzwiz, you can use a severed arm, which doesn't work, to actually try to somehow prod something. No, he'll leave it alone. <laughs> no, he's going as far as he can. But he won't push it up. No, he's like yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, team two. Let's concentrate on you for a little bit. <laughs> All right. uh, team two, Hawk. You've moved on ahead. Um, yep. As you do, you feel uh, the walls around you start to crumble, and as you look up. You see these huge, uh, the the dirt starts to shift, the rock starts to pour down around your head. Um, I shout back to the others, move, 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 as fast Mm -hmm. as you can. With Shilin's dark vision, can she see kind of potentially an end to this tunnel? Does she know we're kind of near the end or does she think we have to turn back? You can see, um, you can see there is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Um, (laughs) But Hawk is in your way, and it's starting to rain down. It starts okay. with I'm going uh, to small stones, unrush. then bigger stones, and then earth is pouring down. Okay. So I'm like, quick, let's go, let's go. Yeah. We can get through this if we go bloody quickly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shilling, do a dexterity check. Dexterity. And Hawk as well, please. <laughs> do I just not make it because I'm... What, a dexterity I'm... saving right, <laughs> Dave? Yeah, saving, saving throw. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sa- me too, Dave. Dirty, dirty 20. Okay, shilling. Dirty. Uh, dirty. Oh, no, I'll roll. Um, eight plus seven. That is uh, 15. Enough. 15. Yeah. yeah. Dave, do I roll? Yes. Okay. No. No? <clears throat> so, Hawk, um... You've got enough. You burst out this. You feel the weight of the earth as the and the rocks as they start to come down. Really heavy pouring on you. You burst out into the next chamber. Um, you turn around and you just see Shilling, who's trying to push through as much as she can. And the earth. This is um, Superman one. Lois Lane is getting all that earth is starting oh, to pour yeah, into yeah, the car. Yeah. Oh, she mm. can't make it, and but and she can't go forwards and she can't go backwards. Bakaris, you see Shilling. Vroom, disappear Isn't... in the rock and the dirt and the shale and everything. Is, Shilling. Is any of her poking out? <gasps> oh, no. If I woke up to the chamber with a dragon lance, that'd be really cool. Been sucked down. <laughs> you become one with the ground. <laughs> you take 17, Shilling, 17 points of damage. Luckily, I had oh. that healing, so I'd have been dead. Oh! 
Don't, don't forget you've got the eight temporary, so you lose those. Oh, thank God. Us. Okay, so I've got 17 left. We're all good. Well, we're not all good, nice. but we're, we're alive. Well, you're buried alive. The car is what alive. you going to do. I mean, I, I um, can't, like, try it's and literally out. a wall of dirt now, right? Try and, like, yep. dig yeah, out I'll... myself out. Oh, obviously, Flynn will turn around and try and dig her out, like, as fast as he can. Until he can yep. get something that he can see, like an arm or whatever. Yeah. And then I'll pull it as hard as I can, sort of thing. She's held her breath underwater a lot, obviously, going on the boats and that, going in the sea. So I think she's she's not good at being panicking, keel-hold. she's keeping calm. She's very good at, you know, being if, submerged. And if that's if, if it's boats, literally it? looking like just yeah. a solid thing of wall, you hear him go, God damn it. And he <laughs> runs around that corner. That, that they're heading towards that door as fast as he can to try to go to the other side. Because mm-hmm. he's got a bad feeling about whatever's happening. <laughs> I got yeah. a bad feeling about this. Yeah. You, this is where the fun begins. Right. Back to team one. Two weeks till I retire. <laughs> I guess as you run around the corner, oh, it's like, the door. Well, well, what's going on? They're in... Tr- the... the tunnel collapsed it, it looked like what yes um wherever it leads out i know flynn seemed to make it through the other side shilling i i i couldn't reach out to her fast enough she was closer to the other side than me when it closed but we need to get there quick and you see him sort of looking um you're you're moving carefully Yord, right uh, no no not, not carefully no I'm, okay. I'm opening the door and going through yeah, I'm going straight through that door too. Like it is Okay, so I'll run in as well. Yeah. Do we need to like two hours we need to go back? Yeah, I guess feeling based on the directions we've been moving, like I'll have kind of a natural inclination to run towards this way because I know that that would be directionally <laughs> towards the tunnel. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. like cast haste and he's running at super speed. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> um so is that a weapons rack York, in a you're, tomb? you're in Bakaris. You're the first ones into this room. Now there are violet flames engulf this room, uh, dancing across the walls with faded mosaics of uh, blacksmiths forging gleaming weapons. Uh, there are bars that you can see seal off alcoves to the north and south, uh, where Fizzwiz is standing now, and to the west there are weapons that hang on the walls. Uh, and a crude, uh, another crude tunnel has been punched through the south wall here, this location. I'll bring these up so uh, you can see <clears throat> when it catches up. There's two. Uh, and that door has been smashed as well, hasn't it? That's what I'm right in front of. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me, oops, let me change that for you. So the creatures tunneled his way through uh, from from the northern alcove, straight through that door, straight through the wall, obviously to whatever chamber lies behind. He's, he's taking a direct path to his goal. Correct. Now, as you're running through, so as Grom, as you're running through, yeah, you're not paying attention to this, but um, another theatrical vision appears. Bakaris, Fizz, and Yorg, you can see this. It's a knight. And you see this knight receive a vision from a beam of divine light. And you then see, as his wife is pleading with him, you see that he dons his armor, he mounts his steed, and then he heads off and disappears in the distance. Now that, um, I will show you a picture. I will bring this up. There you go. Looks oh, like that. That's really cool. Oh wow, that's beautiful. That's awesome artwork. Yeah. That's stunning. Man, the, the 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 value of the theatrics in this place are prime. <laughs> yeah, prime. Yeah, now with Fizzwiz, uh, looking through the bars, you can see what appears to be uh, an axe, and it's in pristine condition. Um, I would say Grom and Bakaris. Grom, you've raced past it. Yeah. Uh, Bakaris, you see on these weapon racks. Most of the weaponry is um, is not good. It's it's 
dilapidated over time. Um, but there are a few things which don't seem to be uh, uh, have rotted or rusted. There is a sword. There is a breastplate, which is just caked in dust, uh, but looks looks quite uh, shiny, even though it's caked in dust. And you see what appears to be um, like a, a, a kind of like a not exactly body armor, but it's it looks like it's made out of feathers. Uh, Sorry, was the breastplate's made out of feathers. No, the breastplate is just covered in dust. Uh, but there's another, that, there's another there's another body thing. item, which looks it's not exactly a cloak, uh, more was it like a poncho mantle. kind of thing, but a man uh, covered <laughs> in uh, feathers. Right. Cool. Um, this will point out to um, the chorus and Yorgi's like, that's pristine. And he points through the bars. Like, I mean, bars would mean stopping somebody from getting an item. And uh, Yorg, if we're going to fight this thing, I think that's worth taking. Yeah. Agreed. How do we get now, in Grom, there? You, Grom, you've raced on. Yep, you can I've see Hawk on. is trying to dig out with his bare hands. He's digging through the dirt. What do you want to do? I'll, I'll run up. Hawk, what, what, where, where is she? Mute. You're mute. He's <laughs> just digging. <laughs> yeah, I'm digging so hard I don't even answer. No, is it? Yeah. I say, it's shilling. She's in here. Quick, help! I, I'll drop to my knees as well and try to like help him, sort of like dig. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll be frantically digging, but then I'll stop for a second and I'll just slap my hand down on the ground, and I'll just close my eyes and I'll hit. Uh, what is it? Resistance? Yeah, I'll hit him with a... Uh... Let me see here. I'll hit Resistance, which is... Shilling, you would then have uh, 1d4 to add to any saving throw roll. Excellent. Thank you very much. And right after I do that, I'll <laughs> pop back off and then and then continue to, like, dig. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll say to Fizz and Makaris, um Try and, try and figure out if we can get into these rooms to, to, to collect some of this stuff. I agree that we need to find stuff that is going to help us in this fight. I, I need to help Grom uh, get get Schilling and, and Flynn out of this uh, this tunnel collapse. I'll, I'll move up. Do a and, them. And, yeah. and just to be fair, just to be fair, resistance is a touch. So I'm not physically touching her. I'm hoping that touching the ground that she's sort of also mm -hmm. connected to is going to work but i don't know mm -hmm. if it does i'm just i'm trying something yeah don't worry i'm sure she's got your permission as this is going on shilling is almost like going to a trance like state just to slow her heart rate down and so she's in panic so she's kind of like you can hear you can slowly. hear them digging yes yeah, so she's kind of like i don't need to move now just need to conserve oxygen and not fall asleep basically right so Go on, uh, on. Step, the, the step aside space there the space there is quite tight, so you've got Hawk and one other person to help dig. Who's going to do that? You've got I, I will do Hawk. it. I, I will take my shield, and I will yeah. use my shield as a, a large shovel, and I'll start Good just idea. hawking um, soil out as, as quickly as I can. And I'll run, I'll get on the other side and do the same thing with my shield. So, like, either side. You wanna, you're going to run back all the way, all the way around? Well, no, I was, I, can I, like, slide kind of around to get on this well, side? If, if, what I'll do is I'll no, drag it out flat. onto the floor. I'll drag it out onto the floor, and you push it away. Okay, that's so fine. we, we yep. get, like, a bucket chain going sort of thing. Yep. So I'll be behind him then, just kind of, like, shit, getting the dirt out of the way. Okay. Uh, Bakaris and Fizzwiz, what are you up to? Uh, I'm uh, looking okay. at these bars, okay. trying to figure out anything that can be done to get, get us in there to get stuff. Yeah, if we can do like an investigation check to see if there's like a release button or if these are like, uh, you know, uh, something that can move or if these are like placed in to stop people from going in. Mm -hmm. Or if you say the Solemnia like knights uh, phrase that I know Steve knows I'm blanking on off the top of my head. It's not <laughs> a yeah. yeah. Uh, if I say that, if, uh, if there's something that happens, uh, 15 plus two yeah 17 17 at disadvantage as well 
Uh, not a disadvantage, no. I've got um, level one exhaustion. Everything's a disadvantage. Ah. Oh, oh so you said you got it as well. Sorry. Um, okay, so... It's Fizz, been like a week. What you see <laughs> is... Um, you don't see a way in. But while you're doing this, you can see um, what's in the chamber. You see the Tomb of the Night is, is laying there. Um, and he's holding uh, quite a large battle axe. It's nice and shiny. Uh, Bacaris, what you see in the south chamber, now that you're actually looking properly, um, is again, there is a body of someone uh, in entombed in this yellow cloth, mummified in this yellow cloth, and they appear to be wearing a medallion around their neck. It's just on their chest. Another one that's kind of disc shaped, and it's just there. You don't see, neither of you see a way of opening these bars. Um, I'll cast Mage Hand. Yeah, I was uh, about to say, Mage Hand could get a medallion, potentially. Yeah, and I will cast Mage Hand and then um, try and grab the medallion, and then will attempt to grab the Great Axe, but I can only do it to 10 pounds, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, if we can get the medallion, we'll start there. Okay. Uh, Dave's use of BG3 rules now, so it's okay. Yeah, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the uh, South Chamber, what you see is um, the medallion. It's fine. Mage Hand picks it up, brings it back, and it is uh, a symbol. It is an iron amulet, and there's a symbol on it of a smith's hammer. Um. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, did it? Let's see if we can get the axe first, and then we'll deal with like if we can see what this is. Um, I guess he tries to like move the axe with Mage Hand, but. I'm going to I'm gonna let you have it. The the axe you get, uh, it, it clanks onto the floor, but the mage head is, mage hand is struggling, <laughs> but it brings it up to the bars <laughs> within reach. Um, and I, have a, I have a picture of that one. So what you see mm. uh, is if I can find it. There we go. Uh, what you see on the axe Whoa! is oh. perhaps the axe again. <laughs> is that a D20 up top? Ooh. Oh, that's an obsidian. That's a D20. It's, it's an obsidian D twenty. It's just gained a level in barbarian. Only ones. That's what I Holy want. Shit. An obsidian yeah. D twenty. Um. So, what's so that? As well? I'm sorry to make again. That's in the. Uh, that's in here. That's in the the weapon rack. I guess we move into there and start looting. Okay. <laughs> so in there, you find. Um, I'm just going to tell you what it is because it is basically loot. Uh, you find a plus one longsword. Uh, there you go, Bacaris. Yeah. You find a mithril breastplate. Ooh. Oh. I feel like your is Bacaris. about to be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dragon scales. Uh, Light as and man. you also... Uh, see this. Oh. This is that kind of poncho oh. thing with all the feathers. Oh, my shit, my um, that looks like you're a druid. <laughs> I love it. That all gets the put straight on over my red coat. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't wait. <laughs> they're, they're leaves, aren't they? Uh, they are. They're leaves and feathers. Yeah, it's, a, it's a mixture of things. It looks Being like, a, like a simple rag underneath. <laughs> um, or a leather Seeing skin. from the forest and Sandcrest yes. and hearing your exactly. talk about Sandcrest earlier, he like holds it. He's like, <laughs> just like home. Six on. <laughs> so, for your reference, uh, <laughs> that is a Kaganesti forest shroud. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to pretend I know how to spell that. Okay, now. Um, uh, Grom, while you're kind of helping to move the dirt mm -hmm. from one place to the other, <clears throat> you see <laughs> the flames um, start to play out uh, a new piece. Okay. Oh, that's this one. Uh, this one, you see the knights. Uh, encounters the attendance of the elf woman from the first vision. 
and they're taunting him and they point back the way he came but this time the knight he slays them he cuts them down one at a time and then he turns back home in a rage and then the flames flick out and go to the edge of the room Now, also in the room, in in this long chamber that you're in, there are, um, in the previous chamber, Jorg, you spotted uh, mosaics of blacksmiths. In this chamber, there are mosaics of knights, and they're riding armoured stallions, uh, and they cover the walls of this room, and they're lined, all lined individually in in violet flames. And to the east lies the, the, the shattered door that you came in, um, but at the west end of the room stands a statuette of a rearing horse. And there are, basically, if you were to go down there, you'd see two stone doors leading to the south. Now, you, uh, Grom, you also see in this area two... If it, if it let me do it. There we go. Whoop. Let's put this up on screen. Ghosty horses. Yeah. You can see uh, two warhorse skeletons that manifest at the other end of the other end of the hall. Okay. As you're, you're, you're trying to dig out this dirt. The, and they would be they would be the same as like the visuals I've seen so far or different? Uh, they are skeleton war horses. Yeah. Okay. But... These are not like ethereal. These are like physical skeleton war horses that have just yes. appeared. They're not like the violet flames. Okay. These are something else. Yorg, you better hurry. <laughs> I, we double time the digging. What? Uh, is, uh, is, is Hawk out yet? No, I, I was out already. It's just, it's only, um, it's only that's actually caved Shilling. in. Okay. Uh, Hawk, Grom, um, just step away and be on guard. Be, be alert in case they attack. Um, okay. I'll get I'll get shilling. You, you gotta promise me you gotta get her out, York. You gotta promise I'll, me. I'll, I'll get her out. I'll get her out. Don't worry. I don't. I, we're not taking the next tunnel. It's obviously. And with that, while you're talking, you see the war horses rear up oh, and they no. start charging down the corridor towards you. If if oh. they're charging down the 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 thing, can can I? Move forward, run, and longsword through the legs. <laughs> Take them out. Nice. They're skeletons. There's less muscle and tissue to, to go through. It's hopefully it works. I don't know. <laughs> so, yep. You run in. You run mm-hmm. past Grom and Hawk, who seem transfixed by these skeletons racing towards them. And as you brandish your sword, the horses look at you and they stop. They seem to recognize you. And then both at the same time, they bow their heads and almost tip one leg. And they both bow down to you. Oh, Oh, your authority. And as, as he's doing that, I'll just stand up with my shield. Yeah, y'all, y'all, this is Lord Bacaris's dream, kind of. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. He he is just as confused as probably anyone else is. Um, and goes, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and then I take it because they they appeared near that casket off in the distance. Can I walk towards that and, and check it out? 
Well, as as they're bowing, and you pass them, they vanish. Who's rolling <laughs> dice? Yeah. Sorry, that's me trying out my new dice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some fancy I'm dice. Just trying trying dice. It's that, it's that Gen Con dice. Yeah, it is. I was so, just sitting there. I was like, yeah. these are very pretty. I just got to roll. As, as <laughs> you're walking so past the horses, <laughs> just because you're buried alive and bored, <laughs> right. yeah, so like, as you walk, as you walk past the horses, yeah. uh, they're bowing down to you. Uh, they vanish. They disappear. And on the floor in front of your feet is um, like a white bone charm of a horse. I, I pick it up. Interesting. Okay. Mm. So this is called, um, in D&D Beyond, this is called a favor of the heroic steed. It is a supernatural gift or a charm. And basically, there are um, two heroic steeds have found you worthy. And they have agreed to serve you. This charm has two charges. Now, as an action, you can expend one charge to summon a warhorse wearing full plate barding with an armor class of 18. And that warhorse will serve you for up to 24 hours uh, before <laughs> vanishing. You can also dismiss it if you wish. And it's made of skeletons nice. in armor. That's just that that's pretty cool. metal. <laughs> But it only has two charges, and it's done. It only has two charges, and then it's done. So and and it never recharges. It's not like nope. uh nope. Okay. Nope. Good to know. Handy though. It's just trying to drag an axe through. Like <sighs> it's shooting out. Yeah. Thing. That's so cool. Yeah. What? Hawk says that was bloody weird, and then I barrel on down the corridor, following the steps, the yeah. footsteps. You're, you, you finally managed to reach Shilling. You can see her hand, and you drag her out. Yep. Okay, I'll walk over and try to, like, see if I can help. Like, can I help pull? I'll, I'll, I'll just grab her hands and, and just yank her out. Like, uh... I'll grab your... Strength, check, strength, check. It's like a really, like... Do you want me to roll? Go for it. Limp pad. Constitution saving throw, see if you get ripped in half. Yeah, oh. uh, it's a dirty 20. Nice. Hey. Well done. Dirty 20. Filthy. You know I'll just shout to Flynn. We're not, we're not doing any more tunnels. Just find the find us the door to the final chamber. The the creature's <laughs> obviously already there. Let's just let's just move on. Yeah. We, 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 Can we, I still see the story. footsteps on the ground, though? <laughs> Say that again, Hawk. Uh, can we still see the footsteps on the ground in this in this chamber that we're in? No, because they he went, went through, he, the, he went through the, tunnel. the tunnel. Yeah, well, and he's gone through he, the next tunnel. Uh, yeah, we're we're just not going through the tunnel. I I, I go uh, through this door. Yeah. I'm not sure. What's it's everyone else doing? The same place, but bloody. Chilling's okay. just <clears throat> catching her breath. She's patting down. She's she's like, she's, oh, thank God, she finds her weird little elf necklace with the fingers on it. So she's like. Thank God that didn't come off. <laughs> and that's basically what she's mainly concerned about, but obviously a little bit breathless. And okay, I'm opening the other door. Okay. Right before that happens, um, Grom will just lay a hand on your back, Shilling, like mm -hmm. noticing that you've like taken some taken some scratches and whatnot as you fell yeah. down. And you'll just feel like a warm pulse mm -hmm. through your back. I'll hit you with uh, Cure Wounds. Excellent, thank you. David. Yep. <laughs> David. Sweet, isn't it? Can I you get you uh, <laughs> 12 points you of uh, healing? Fabulous, thank greatest you so much. Map. I should have instantly feels her shoulders relaxed. The greatest. There's ever grace. She is the feeling much better. Or yeah. D&D in general. And um, you know, know how you know. just like... Who's, 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 really who's handsome. that? Some... Uh, yeah. Fucking fuck that guy. He's no, <laughs> he's no Dave Badger. He's no Badger. Do you still require an hour to attune to an item, or can I just click that button? <laughs> uh, to to which item? That forest dwellers. Um, the one he's trap. already wearing. <laughs> uh, no, you, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you can wear it, but you're gonna have to attune to it. Very good. So which I take a long rest. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> so, that was a, that was a glory old chat up line if I ever heard one. 
<laughs> I'm opening one what? and Randy's opening the other. Okay, okay. They both lead to the same chamber. So as you walk into this particular room, um, da -da -da, yep. uh, this chamber blazes again with violet flames. You can put your tokens in. In the middle of the room, uh, in the middle of the room, steps lead up to a sleek marble monument etched with hundreds and hundreds of lines of text. Uh, there are doors that you can see, or a door, leads from the room uh -huh. uh, to the, from the north to the east. Now, the next thing you see, the violet flames start to play out another scene in front of you. This time, the knight slays his wife. He cuts her down. And what? just as you see, the world around him crumbles and burns. The knight burns, bursts into flame as well, but he doesn't fall. This time, his armor fuses with his body. His eyes cast, uh, burst into uh, blaze with flames. And he becomes a terrifying, deathless figure. He is basically embodiment of Lord Soth that you saw. Oh, That's why he knows where uh, he is. Yep. Yeah, because he's been hit. Well, he's been hit yeah. before all this is yeah. His fucking grave, innit? Yes, yeah. or his or his wife's. Eloquently put, Ian. Oh, <laughs> I like. Yeah. I'm a man of simple words. <laughs> to the point. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna do? lick it down right. to that yeah. door. Yeah. And uh, the before we open. do that, did we actually find anything useful? I got this huge axe. Who wants it? Oh. <laughs> you can do a uh, investigation if you want. In here, you mean? Yeah. And there's this mithril armor. Got four sides of this <laughs> thing in the middle of the room. Yeah, Fizz is just carrying everything except the longsword that I have. This <laughs> <laughs> huge axe that he cannot hold and mithril armor. <laughs> He's just like wearing like, a mithril like, crowd of people. Weighed down by stuff. I, I run back and say, What mithril? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll have that. <laughs> Hands you the mithril armor. And then he looks at Grummy's like, You want this? What, which, which one is it? It's the, the obsidian axe. axe. What, what did that one have? Was it a plus one axe? Dave didn't actually tell us. It's an axe. No. <laughs> One-handed one one axe? It's a battle axe, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, great axe. Yeah, I'll, got I'll, I'll, it all all over it. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll reach out and take it. Um, okay. Well, it looks... Uh, looks fancy. It's pretty nice, and I'll oh, kind of like, D20 on top of it. like get its and weight you know, in my hand. Part exchange like, it, you know, just cost you a mortgage. Grave roll is fine. Okay. So I'll look at it with my like dwarven background. Um, Dave, do I do I see anything about it that's interesting, or does anything strike me on it? Uh, it, it does. Um, I haven't got that written down at the moment, so we'll we'll do that outside game, and I'll pass you okay. the details. Okay. <laughs> Plus four. Oh, thanks, Dave, for the instant Immune smite, yeah. the instant acts of smiting, <laughs> smites enemies instantly. Yeah. The game so, winning acts. So after that, you mentioned there was a bunch of script writing on this monument. Um, yes. I'll, I'll approach that, like based on languages I know or or like history. Is do I? Can I read any of this? Yeah. Which side do you want to go on? There's four sides. Uh, just the side that's right in front of me. This side right here. Okay, you're over there. Yeah. Um, you do. You notice all this is it's just written in uh, uh, common. Um, but you, okay. there's from reading the names, you don't you just you don't read lie every single sort of name. You just kind of scan it quickly as you can. Uh, and one knight on this side seems to uh, stand out. Um, it says Knight Vogler. Anything else, or just Knight of Vogler? Knight of Vogler. <laughs> okay. If I if I spin around the other side, what do I what do I see? Uh, again, there's a whole kind of list of names um, for no particular reason. Uh, uh, there's several names that kind of jump out at you. <coughs> One of them is uh, a knight called Knight Jandin. Right, while they're, while they're all doing that, you suddenly see um, 
Flynn sort of look at the mithril breastplate and go, Nah, it's not my style. And he tucks it at York. <laughs> what have you just looked up? <laughs> it, it, gives you, it gives you worse armor class, don't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it gives me one worse armor class. Yeah. Uh, it... But also, it isn't. It isn't really something I'd wear anyway, to be honest. So it's not too far gone to sort of say, well, you know, if it was a mithril chain shirt or something, possibly, but because I could wear that under my you know, sure, but my might suit you better, you'll try it. I uh I like my full plate. No <laughs> Put it in the key it fits with put it in the key, we sell it. I was about to say that shillings like Oh no, I need to move okay. down now after I've caught my breath. Uh, can you wear it? I think it'll harm my stealth. Yeah, yeah, it will not only do that. It it means you can use less dexterity bonus mm. for your armor class, so it's like that's why I couldn't wear it. Uh, I, I mean, I'll if none of y'all wear it, but Karis will <laughs> the myth, wear it. The choice. mithril version of armor does not impose any disadvantage to dexterity checks or stealth rolls, so you can wear it. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, just cool. that you can't use as much dexterity bonus. As a bonus to your armor class, that's got the it, only thing. Got it. But it's super light. Sorry. Yeah, because it's mithril. It's really good unless you've got twenty dexterity. Then it's not so. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, now that the, the equipment has been <laughs> handed out and people are ready, I'm going to open the door to the next chamber, please. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Come on! I'll just continue with my for this monument, but that's all I'm doing. Okay, the next chamber. I have to wait for the uh, stream yard to catch up. There we go. I can see what I'm doing now. Boom, boom, boom. Um, okay, so in this chamber you see a statue of a saluting knight of solumnia stands in the room along with two tall marble slabs each etched with text all three are crackling with these violet flames and you see a spirit of a knight of solumnia kneeling before one of the slabs in front of you there is also a door that leads to the west uh, and the, and there's a door that you just came from. Sorry, a door that leads to the west. A double door that leads to the east. I get my left and right moved up. Um, yeah. And you see uh, a female knight. Just she's on one knee, in the pose, holding her sword to the ground in front of this uh, name of uh, slab of different names. I'll say behind her, Solaris or Mithras. She kind of, um, oh, almost as if you disturbed her rest or her thoughts. She turns around, sees you all standing there. She says, um, I wasn't expecting company. Soft is here. He's come to <laughs> claim something. I no no soft. My name is Knight Yandin. With Solaris with Mythas. I am a knight of the Order of the Sword. I am also a knight of the sword. My name is Jorg. Jorg. I don't know how long you've been deceased, but there is a creature beyond these walls, beyond this door leave in the next chamber it's come here to retrieve something we don't know what but he's working for Takesis the it is happening again yes yes it's happening again this creature that has come the 
visions, the illusions around that uh, guide us through this crypt. It is this night, now loyal to the, the, the Dragon Queen. The We're night here, to stop here is. You must be mistaken. The night here is. Um, Lord Salamir. But. I must tell you more information before you go in. I died during the Cataclysm. I was one of the knights who survived. We attacked the dragons on Lord Salamir's order. We brought his body back to Kanaman. However, we or I twisted the truth. Instead, I reported that Lord Salamir died defending people from rampaging evil dragons. And Salamir was entombed a hero. I know I regret this. I know of Salamir's disobedience and his deeds contributed to the gods' disfavor and ultimately to the cataclysm. Oh. And I believe myself complicit in my fellow knight's disgrace. Lord Salamir was Lord Salamir was entombed with the weapon and he is in the next chamber. The dragon lance. Exactly, you have heard of it. Perhaps in your hands it can find redemption and the gods' favor. The flames that you see blazing through the tombs are fire from the cataclysm. They are used to be, uh, they used to be confined to Salome's tomb, but now they run rampant. I don't know why, but you mentioned this Lord Soth. I've not this being has not passed by this way, otherwise I would face it. It tunnelled through the walls to bypass these chambers. Tell me, mm. if was you... Knight Salamir married to an elven woman? Not Sir Salamir, no. Mm. Then who was married to the elven woman? I don't know of the elven woman you speak of. Either way, if we go through there and the hat, will you help us defeat this creature? Part of my penance is to serve here. I must spend my days reciting the names on these slabs. But at the very least I can do is I will wish you luck. And with that, she just slowly fades away. Then we must take up that dragon lance and stop this creature from getting his hands on it. York, are you ready? Yes, Lord Bacurus. I am. All right. Oh. I'm... Can I ready an action, the please? Door. Dave, as soon as that door opens, if we see Lord Soth, I'm going to loose a crossbow bolt at him. Okay. Alright. Slam that door open. Slam. Uh, I, I do the same. It's a double door, so we do one, one door each. Yes. <laughs> He's going to boot it open. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> this is definitely the big Like a Navy SEALs team, we are going yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the Navy Seals might be uh, quieter. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Nah, they ain't got shit on us. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> so, fail to see... see the other crack in the wall. Uh, you burst into the room. I'll read out the burst! description for you. Uh, violet flames outline the tombs set into the walls of this spacious crypt. There is a heavy stone brazier sits empty near the room center. A sarcophagus to the north lies in pieces at the mouth of a crumbling tunnel. 
a wall to the southeast is similarly, similarly broken. At the far end of the tomb, a flaming dais holds a sarcophagus sculpted with the image of a knight. A life-size sculpture of a dead dragon impaled with a spear curls around the sarcophagus. Something within the sarcophagus moves, slamming against the lid as the unnatural flames on the dice blaze with wild intensity. But no oh. soft. <laughs> there is no Lord Soth. There is no standing in the chair. What chamber. the hell? I, I move Flynn across the room. Flynn runs in there and he's like, where the hell is he? Sam. You see... Um, as the violet flames waver, forming ominous images uh, once more, you see uh, faces which are leering at you. And again, the slab above the tomb uh, boom, is getting uh, is banged from the inside. You see the tomb lid. Doosh, start to lift with each each pound <laughs> until eventually the stone le stone uh, lid shatters in half as a mailed fist punches its way out and a creature stands up inside the uh, sarcophagus what you see uh, is this oh <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, I refuse to see it. <laughs> you refuse. Look at those it. pauldrons. Hold on, hold That's on. Not... <laughs> That's not a good guy. Who has? Are we wearing skulls? Are we the baddies? That's, <laughs> That's the does. secret of the campaign the whole time. Yes. Yeah, you're not supposed Hans, to figure it out yet. Are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> so <I> just. Uh, <laughs> Everybody, as quick as you can, roll initiative. Oh. 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 As quick as I can. Go. Oh, oh it's mine. Yep. Oh, it's freaking out. <laughs> I forget I have a minus one every time I roll this. Oh, uh, that's, that's a six. My token has disappeared from the uh, map as well. Levels here. I think you ended up below someone, yeah. Yeah. Steve, can you put a new one in? Oh, yeah. Fifteen. Oh. I'm mine. Right. So. Oh, no. I'm, I'm a lot more than that. What am I doing? Right, everybody got ready? Yep. Right. Um, Josh, I know you're going to have to leave at some point. Uh, it might be, because we're just going to wrap up because we're very, very close to the end. So we're going to do this fight for you. Um, okay. And then you can jump out and then you can you can catch up on who's got what loot <laughs> at, at the end. And I'll, and I'll we all have the good loot. You, you won't have anything. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll send you the uh, description of the axe for you. Okay, do you want me to Everybody. hang here for the next 15 minutes or you want me to go now? No, you can, let's let's play out the fight. Okay. If you're happy to, we'll, we'll take yep. it to uh, as, as far as we can. So, <laughs> who's first up? Jorg. Go for it. Uh, I, I will just step forwards and uh, and, and attack. Um, clearly, with the skull pauldrons, as was pointed out by Fizz, this is a bad guy. Uh, and whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever he did um, that was covered up, we don't know. Uh, he, yeah, he's going to pay for it now. So I'm going to roll to attack, please. Uh, that's 25 to hit. 25 what? to Lovely. hit does, of course, hit. And I would do nine points of damage with that strike. And then with my second attack on the backswing, uh, hits with 14. 14 does not hit. Uh, so that, that will uh, hit a shard of his armour and draw a nice set of sparks in the sky as, as it deflects the blow. Uh, that is my go over. I'll just stand in front of him, shield at the ready, weapon raised for the next round. Okay. 
Okay, Grunk. Okay. Um, I'll I'll stare down the uh, the creature, and um, I'll just hold my fist up in the air, and I'll just go and bring it down, and you'll see this swirl of light come out of the air and just engulf the creature. Nice. And uh, it'll start to glow a bright pink. <laughs> nice. Very fire. Oh, nice. Okay. nice. He's, he's already covered in flames as well, so uh, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> now he's an extra um, disco. Let's see. Uh, any creature in the area? So you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Yes, please. Um, Shilling, I'm going to reduce you to 14. That's all right. And I'm going to reduce me to 13 because people with the same number, it jumps around. <laughs> Anything else, Grom? You, you need to make dexterity same throw to see if oh, you're caught in a fairy fire. Well, he'll be caught in it, but if he, he fails the dexterity saving throw, he also glows in light. He's fat. He's already okay. glowing anyway. You can't not miss okay. it. So everybody he's, gets he's advantage. He's a flaming sword as well. Everybody gets what, sir? Advantage on every attack. Oh! Woo! Yeah, fire. Fire. Good. I'm hiding. Yeah, as long as I can wrong. see the creature, it is concentration, and it's up to yeah. one minute. As long as I can see the creature, everybody's got advantage on their attacks. That's right. Good, mm. I like it. That's cool. It's a bit so good. good that I had high initiative on that one. It's also great in Baldur's Gate yeah, One of the best three. spells in the game. <laughs> <laughs> this stream is not official. Any... Baldur's Gate 3, but if Baldur's Gate 3 want to sponsor the stream, then we'll have to take money. Else? Sneak attack on yeah. everything. Yep. Larian, if you're watching, we'd love a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've opened up a new uh, UK based office. Not that I know that. Um, oh, really? Grom. They're looking for people. You guys like NBA? <laughs> they're based. They're based in. They have one in Guildford or Norwich, I think it is. Oh, Norwich. Oh, Guildford's close. Yes. I've got family in Norwich. Jeff is like, I, maybe, maybe I'll put something in there. <laughs> Glom. Anything else, Glom? Uh No, I will stand my ground right there. Okay, Hawk, you're up. Ah, uh, right. Hawk is going to uh, literally jump next to the um, skull blazing apparition. And then he's going to draw his rapier and his uh, boarding axe, and he is going to attack. And... Um, I'm going to attempt to um, hit him with the rapier first. Mm -hmm. Work two attacks on that, and then because I have um, two weapon fighting and everything, I also have a third attack with the axe. Go so, for it. advantage on all of these, isn't it? Uh, that is a nineteen to hit. Nineteen hits. Right. That is uh, rapier, rapier. Five uh, plus five. So it's ten damage for the first hit. Yeah. He then, so he's hit with the rapier. He then brings it back and does a flourish to bring it forward again and carve his initial in the breastplate of the apparition. Nice, yeah. Uh, oh, it's a 17 on the dice. Plus that, eight to hit. So that, that is that definitely hits. a hit. That is a nine damage. Yeah. And then he brings down his boarding axe in his left hand to try and cleave the apparition. Yep. And that is a 15 plus seven yep, to hit. Hits. And that's one. If it's over 20, six. it's definitely a hit. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's good. That is um, six plus four is ten to damage on ten him. Damage. So he basically uh, thrust with his first hit, pulled out, went with his second hit, and did a did a little H for Hawk on his <laughs> on his chest, and then thrust into it, <laughs> and then came down with the axe and cleaved him. Nice. nice. Who's up next? Oh, Shut in. yes. Shut in. I can um... see 
Randy's getting horny there because of what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> so, so deep picks to death. Love you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> you see, um, uh, Shilling, before you, you do anything, you see yeah. him. Uh, this flaming knight decked out in huge plate mail and adorned with uh, skull pauldrons. Yeah. And you see, you hear him, and you see him. Uh, he screams yep. as Hawk lays in his uh, in his attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and shoot him in the mouth. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> nice. So I've got advantage. I rolled. If, if you roll a nat one, you're gonna hit Hawk. I rolled a, uh, I rolled a 10, but it's plus 7, so it's a 17 to hit. It's a miss. Damn. You have advantage, so roll again. Oh, yeah, I rolled, that was two, I rolled 10 on one oh, right. and oh. slightly lower on the other one. Yeah. So that's me done, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Okay, anything else you want to do? Um, I think I'm going to stay put where I am, because I quite like the hiding crater situation. It's not like a crater, it's... it is a tunnel. Oh, and it's a tunnel, feel, I thought it was a crater. Feel, no, it's a tunnel. You can feel a breeze coming from Ooh, the other end. I'll keep and that in mind. You can see light. Excellent. Mm. I shall. Like yes. Someone might have escaped. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, my go. So, my go. Um, right, let's roll for some hits. Uh, so, he has this huge flaming blade. Um, I get plus it. That's 24 to hit. I'm hitting Hawk. Yep, that's this that blade, oh, oh. You, he, he has these practice moves. He is a knight, a very well-trained knight, and he holds it like this, and he cuts down, cleaving a, a, a side opponent first. That is 15 points of damage. Right, oh. I'm going to bonus action um, with the uh, superiority dice, and I'm going to roll a... Oh, my God, I wish I was wearing my glasses. A D8. And yep. I'm going to parry, so whatever I roll on D8 is going to be minus from the damage. Go for it. Uh, that is a 7, so it's minus 7. So what what is the damage? 15. 15. Right, 15 minus 7. 8. Eight. Yeah. yeah. Then he swirls that around and he attacks York. Uh, this is a 22. Another 15 points of damage on York. Yeah, we hit twenty-two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you see him, um, or rather, you hear him. He screams again, and he's screaming in rage. And then, while he's attacking the two of you, he proclaims. You can hear him shout, "It is not me. I am sorry." I am compelled by Lord Soth to attack you. He commands me. It must be done. And then he reaches behind his back and he throws something out at, towards Bakaris. Bakaris, I got a nat 20. <gasps> oh, no. Bakaris. It is Bye. a... You get hit in the by chest Randy. by a throwing axe which is glowing in this kind of flames. Ugh. And it hits you for 28 points of slasher damage as it embeds itself oh. into your chest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out. You, you see Bakaris grab the edge of it and then fall back mm -hmm. uh, at the base of the stairs. Shilin sees us and instantly runs to him because he's kind of right next to her in her line of sight. So she'll quickly yeah. go there and try and, you know... Mm -hmm. Also try and pull him back out of harm's way, but she's very small, so she'll probably just try and put her back out in doing so. <laughs> he calls out Salome, he calls out again. He says, beware my actions. They are not my own. The cursed knight, Lord Soft, compels me. He calls to me through the haunted flames of the cataclysm. Oh, it's the Brazil. Yeah, Bra Bra Fizzwiz. Up to you. Uh, Josh, yeah, uh, if you need to do shoot off, do shoot off. I got five minutes. I'm good. Okay. Uh, Fizz will start running 
hat on, eyes glowing blue, 5, 10, 15, starts to slide, 20, 25 to there, and just shouts, it's just been revoked, and then we'll take a crossbow shot. shot. Uh, advantage. As in that 20. Yeah, well done. Ooh. Let's roll some damage. Uh, it's a D8, I believe. Oh, where's my D8? There they are. Uh, yeah, 1D8 just one. So. Max damage. That is well 16 done. plus 1. That is 17 points of damage. As soon as he just lets it go. Nice. Good hit. <clears throat> where's it hitting? Um, he's not as well practiced to get like a headshot or anything like that, but it definitely like embeds into like a, maybe like a, a gap in the arm, and it maybe it's aiming for like uh, center of mass, so like maybe somewhere in the shoulder or uh, in like a gap in the hip or something. Yep. Cool, cool. Grum, gr- gr- the car is uh, down. As he gets hit, he calls out again. He said, "Lords," he, he grabs the piece uh, as it as it goes into his pauldron because you like that. Uh, Lord Sof commands Salamir. I must slay those who would oppose, oppose Soth. I, ap- I, I again, I apologize. The actions are not of my... And you can see him start to almost fight against his command. He's almost robotic in his movements now. Bakaris, over to you. Yeah, death save. <laughs> there are no... Sorry, Bakaris. Oh, there right. There are no death That's saves. right. I forgot about that. You're right. Uh-oh. So, Bakaris, the last thing you see yeah. is Shilling running towards you. Yeah. Let me put my dice back in the little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yorg, over to you. So, the, the, the brazier behind me was lit with the purple flames, is that correct? Correct. I step oh, back shit. to the brazier. He's going to get a, a, an attack of opportunity. It yeah. is, uh, is eighteen. That's a miss. Or oh, I deflect the the strike with my shield. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll say to him, sir, I will try and break Lord Soft's hold over you. And he shat, using he, he, the skull God. looks back at you, and he looks directly at you, and he says, "Be warned." Soft beckons to uh, beckons me to follow him north back to the place of his dishonor the place in the northern wastes soft calls the city of lost names beware and again you see struggling as he, he gets to prepare for his next attack okay. go for it york I will dump the contents of my water skin into the brazier and use my shield and cloak to smother the flames. Nice. Okay, you take it all off. That's going to reduce your uh, armor class as well. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just, yeah, you know, I dump all the water in Pack there, down. take my cloak off to, to try and clear all the oxygen and just put the shield over the top. I'm just going to hold it down and try and try and this, you know, extinguish the flames because yep. he said in the last round it was the flames that were. Uh, yep. Channeling Lord Soft's power to, to to control his body. So that's that's all my actions for for that round done. Okay, Grom. Okay, so explain something. So Shilling were just her action. She had a dash. Was she, she's did she just she's run, run over to to Bacaris, Yeah, mm-hmm. he's on the floor. You can just see Bacaris, He got that axe in the chest, and he's just bleeding out. Yeah, all I did was like frantically run over us about it and try and. Maybe move him out of harm's way, but I was too, too small. Okay. So at this point, there's no point in me trying to... Because it's already looped back around. There's no point in me trying to heal. It's up to you. You can try. <laughs> okay. It. Um, there's always hope. <laughs> I, will chuck, I will chuck a health potion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it it the car head explodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, like Christ took his eye out nearly. <laughs> it's got axe in the chest, um, glass in the eye. <laughs> I'll, I'll see. I'll see Yorg doing this and and feel like Yorg has he's onto something, right? So I, I'll I'll back off of like potentially what what I was thinking. Um, and I will. I'll move up and I'll swing around this side. And I'll I'll kneel down and I will I will touch Bakaris. Is is there anything I feel? Do I get any different feeling when I touch Bakaris? No, as as with any any time you do this, you can feel there's a spark of life. And what you try to do is find that feeling, that spark, and then you ignite it to heal it. Okay, I then if that's the feeling that I get, then I will I will use my final revamp recharged uh, heal. Yep. And I will hit him with like the hardest jolt that I possibly can do. Cure yep. wounds level three. Go for it. Nice. And I will hold my hand up in the air as, as well. And I'll grit my teeth and I'll just say, Fury, hit me with everything you got. And it was just, and almost what you see is like a bolt of what looks like lightning come out of nowhere and just strike my hand. And it almost like jolts me. It hits me so hard and into him. Cool. And that you will see. Be... Okay. What? Well, what happens? As that happens, the violet flames around the room die back. Does he get to you? <laughs> look at okay. his face? <laughs> does, does he like? Does he look like he's coming to life? Per that, how much? How much you put into it? Okay, so it'd be. Um... Please save him, because I forgot silvery barbs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so it, it would be. Uh, it would be sixteen points of healing. Okay. That's good. Do I take it, Dave? With what we charge. <gasps> yes. Yes, Grom. Yes. Apply changes. Sixteen healing. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Holy shit. Sixteen. Yeah, he gasped, he gasped back to life. Oh! And then he looks around, realizes he's still in the fight, and there's this giant axe. <laughs> <laughs> kind of it's, it's, not, it's not a giant axe, it's a hand axe. It's embedded in you. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah and, he makes it out. Uh, yeah, and I would say from this, like, I'm almost sort of like, I wouldn't say stunned, but I'm like kind of jolted. I sort of like stumble back. At least five foot from him after this. Cool. And Hawk, you're up next. Right, Hawk has seen what's going on and he's ignoring it because he's concentrating on trying to defeat the flaming skull bloke that's in front of him. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so he's going to attack again twice with his rapier, once with his axe. And this time I'm going for the head with the rapier. And if I roll an actual 20, I'm going to pierce through his skull. Yep. Uh, you're all right, Dave. It's not a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is a 15 plus 8, which is a hit. That's, so that's... that's a hit. Oh, shit. I forgot we can oh, pull shots. Oh, nice. nice. I've lost my dice. God, I've got to go to another dice. I got all over excited. Right. Boom. Oh, that was probably fortuitous then. Uh, so that is an eight plus five damage. Yeah. On the first hit. Uh, second hit with a rapier is a 10 plus a 18. Whoa, yeah. Yep, yeah, just about hit. Yeah. Uh, and that is a five, uh, plus five, ten damage. 
Yeah. And the hand axe comes down with the third hit. Oh, fucking hell. It was nearly 18 <laughs> plus 7. It was nearly yeah. <laughs> nearly a critical, but never mind. And that is D6. Boom. And it's 4 plus... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 4. 8 damage. 8 damage. As he comes down with the hand axe on the last okay. hit. Okay. Oof. He takes all of those hits. Uh, Shilling, it's your go. Um, Sonomir calls out and he looks at you, Hawk, specifically. Yeah. And he, he, he says, again, I am sorry. My actions are not my own. But if you I wish, that. I have one final wish. If you would heed them, is please put me to rest. You must smash my skull. Oh, oh. that's oh. why I was aiming for his skull. I say, uh, I understand, I understand, but we've got to defeat you, and I'm really sorry. I'm going to try and get your skull. <laughs> Shilling, um, upon yeah. hearing that, realises she can't smash his skull, but she can at least maybe aim her short bow at it and put a crack in it. So yep. um, she takes aim, obviously kneeling over Lord Paris. Yep. And 15 to hit. Probably 15 two. is a miss. Ah, damn, again. Not very good today. Yep. So, yeah, she was uh, clearly unstabilised and leaning over Lord I would Paris say, from your much. point of view, um, you can still see that there is light coming from that tunnel you was in. in the okay. Mm, okay. I may then, seeing as Lord Bacarus is kind of stabilised, I shall move back to that tunnel and stay put if there is something potentially, you know, of interest there that I may want to draw attention to later on. My go, Salamir. Uh, again, he swings his sword around in a, in a trained flourish. He is, Hawk is the only one uh, nearby. That is a hit, that is 26. That is 15 points of damage. Right, I will use the superior dice again to reduce the incoming damage with a parry. Yep, go for uh, it. Do, 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 do. And I found my D8 somewhere, there it is. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, five. Five damage, right, it reduces by five. Okay, so that's 10 damage. 10 damage, yep. He flourishes around again and does a reversed attack. It misses. Lucky. But then his third attack. Oh my god. Is. Uh, is a 21. Yeah, that is. Well, that is another 15 points of damage. Ah. Yep, yeah, that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, cool. I'm looking a bit bad, but not like at death's door. <laughs> Again, he calls out, please, either run or destroy me. Lord Sof has compelled me to destroy you. I will not rest until this is done. Oh. I'm trying, buddy, Fizz. I'm trying. While I disappeared off camera for a bit, did I miss something about his skull? You did. We have Fizz. to crush his skull. <laughs> crush it to kill him. We have to crush his skull. Fizz will... Okay. Uh, hat's still on the eyes. Glow with um, this blue again. And he drops the crossbow, which is sort of like... Um, on a little like uh, leather thong and like, hangs it aside. And he, you see for the first time in a little while, he pulls out that crooked um, uh, quarter staff that he's got. And he just starts running. Uh, and he will go... Five... 10. Can I make an athletics tech to try and jump over him and crook his neck and pin him down you so can. people can start smashing down his head? You can. I'm technically at disadvantage because of exhaustion. However, does fairy fight, will this count as replacing an attack or um, oh, can it, I do it anything? Will, it will even it out. Okay, cool. It evens Good. it out. So it's a straight roll. One dice. Good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, good stuff. See, Josh. 
Bye-bye. Athletics, yeah? See you later, Josh. Uh, if that's an athletics, that is a 19 plus zero. Well done. Nice. Okay, you, you, you up, up in the air. And I'd like to be just on the other side of him and basically like I've got like the crook of the quarterstaff and I've like dragged him down like back onto like the sarcophagus or the uh, yep. crypt and it's like pinning him down so that his head's like looking up like now I just call out to everybody else the chorus you're going you can see um uh Solomir, as he's looking up at you fizz he just keeps saying I'm sorry I'm sorry and you see he spins the sword around so the hilt is is down the blade is up and he's going to impale you <laughs> yeah Bacaris. oh yeah he's just like it's okay I, we'll end it I okay. stand and move five feet forward towards him uh and I am going to attack at advantage so I need one more Uh, ooh, 18 and 19 for the first two. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, so that the first attack hits, second attack is... Plus, is my modifier plus five, I, I think? Yeah, not gonna hit. It's an 18. 18 hits. Oh, 18 hits? Nice. So, so two strikes uh, coming at you for the first one. I, uh, let's do this. Uh, you see Bakar sort of swing around, hit it. 1d8 plus 4. Uh, that's, that's 9 damage on the first attack. Yeah. And then... And what are, what are you actually doing? I'm, like smacking into the skull trying to break it okay uh are you using the axe or are you using a different weapon i don't have the axe uh, oh no you yeah. don't have the axe yeah, he's, uh, josh has got the axe yeah, yeah. um you've got the plus one haven't you? yeah but apparently the axe is needed <laughs> <laughs> special no. axe uh anyway for the second attack uh roll a d8 that's four plus four that's eight and uh can I? Do I have to say I'm doing the precise strike before the the roll? Because I didn't say that. Um, it does help. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'll do that next time then. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, eight damage on the second attack. So nine and eight. Okay. How do you want to finish him? <gasps> Yay! Uh, oh! I mean, wow. Uh, so you you see him sort of bleeding from the chest, uh, like newly renewed vigor from from the hill spell and he gets up rises takes that sword uh as his head is being sort of held down and he smacks it one good time he spins it around with a flourish takes the butt end of it smashes it straight into the like middle of the face which begins to like crack it and then it just sort of crumbles away yeah you, you finally hear as the skull crumbles and cracks and anticipates the flame it is immediately extinguished the violet flame all in the hall in this chamber immediately goes out. Steve, you can feel that there is where you had your shield over the, the brazier, it was building up. Something was being released. So what you actually did was a good move. You were keeping it contained and you were stopping it getting being channeled to uh, Knight Salomir. So you did you did the right thing, but it had to take a sacrifice of one person to do that. Um, and with it, you just hear on the almost on the breeze, you just hear Thank you. It's okay. You're welcome. Yeah. So, Dave, quick quick question. He yep. broke out of that tomb. It wasn't, it had him, but, well, he had a spell on him, so he must have, like, opened it. There's no sign of where this dragon lance would have been resting here. Uh, it, you can go and have a look. Yeah, that's what, ah, that's what yeah. I'm looking the, for. In the description, oh, there was oh, a stop. spear stabbed into the dead dragon. I was thinking about that too, yeah. Mm. That's that's where I'm going to start with that spear. Is it empty now? 
Yeah, I just need to know if he took that stupid dragon lance. Okay, uh, that's a 16? Yes, 16. Okay. So you're investigating the statue of the dragon, yeah? Yeah, specifically the... The, the spear. The, the spear. Uh, you see the spear? It just looks like it's part of the stone carving. This is uh, not what you would imagine the dragon lance to be. Hmm. Can I investigate the, um, the tomb? Yep. You go over to the sarcophagus. Um, the, the top bits were just cracked and pulled to the side. And inside, you see... Um, not, not, not exactly uh, resplendent of uh, what uh, has historically told is the dragon lance. You see the head um, of what might have been a dragon lance once. Um, so it's a very small part. It's all rusted away. Um, but you pick it up. Uh, and, and you being you, you feel that there is some kind of magic do, there, but it, it's it's distant. Yeah. Do I recognise it from the vision, from when I was dead? Uh, you didn't, she wasn't showing you, she was telling Oh, you. she was just describing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I will say, uh, from the description, that looks like a part of the cursed dragon lance. Um, and it will kind of like look at Jorg and Flynn, and it's like, Jorg, I think that maybe and he holds it out to you, he's like, it's part of your order, surely. Surely it's for you. And then he turns his eyes towards the uh, armor and the corpse on the floor. I, I, I will take the, 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 is it the head you said? Or the handle? It, I think it's, the, yeah, it's I'll, the I'll, point. Yeah, the tip. Okay, okay. I, 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 will, I will take that. And, um, and, and put it in my pack. Can I loot the corpse, please? <laughs> <laughs> While this is all going on, Shillin is checking out the tunnel where the daylight's coming from, so she's wandering a little bit in just okay. to see. So you, uh, Fizz, you can you can ransack as much as you wish. Uh, Shillin, you Perfect. go down the like tunnel, and as you're pissed. going down this thing, it's, it gets smaller, mm -hmm. um, and you can you can put your arms on either side, and you feel the cool breeze of fresh air. Uh, and it's bright. So as as you're covering your eyes to kind mm -hmm. of keep away the light, you step forward, and as you pull your hands away, you see that you have actually come out. Um, if you remember four weeks ago in the last session, there was an artwork <laughs> rendition of what Castle Canaman was. You got the city yes. below. There was like a, almost like a mountain, and then the castle was on top. You were about sixty foot from ground level. Um, and a, a hole has been punched out of the side of this mountain, uh, presumably by Lord Soth. Wow. And you can see the buildings and the streets below you. And just on the distance in the horizon, um, you see one, then two, then three dragons. <gasps> and they're flying no. away from you. I just no. I'm running back into that tunnel being like dragons <laughs> no. coming towards that, us. That brings us to the end of this little uh, dungeon. Um so you what do you like want to do now? I take two of the skeletal arms and one of the pauldrons. <laughs> uh, I mean four arms are you using? We have dragons coming out. We need to prepare the They're not, they're not coming. They're going. They're, they're going. going. Oh, they're going. They're going. Oh, they're sorry. Going. I got my parents wrong. I thought I planted so they've... Still, still so need I'm... to know where the dragon army yeah. is. Uh, well, so... so so you said they were heading north. Uh, I'm going to hazard a guess that they're heading north to the city of Lost Names. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can send a, like, a group of scouts that way so we can get intel before... I decide that you guys, um, so I, so essentially I am not going to be guesting on the next episode. So what Lord <laughs> Bacaris is going to be doing no! is going, yeah, yeah, I'm, you're I'm, the only oh! council member still left alive, aren't you? I, I have to stay yeah. and take care of the city. So I'm going to, uh, very specifically send Derek and a regiment of soldiers under his command as scouts 
only scouting what's going on to give us data so that you, because I'm tasking this group here with finding out um, whatever information about the Dragon's Army plot and how to thwart it. Yeah. Because <laughs> there, you guys ha are way more capable than any of the other soldiers I've met. And a smaller group might be able to do more to get us closer to winning. Yep. Good shout, Karis. Yep. Yeah, we'll down need to rest up and... Yeah. yeah oh, absolutely. If, if we can have a rest and if you get us any discount on magical weapons, that'd be great. <laughs> can I give them a discount on any magical weapons in Calamant? Uh, you can... Uh, well... Special, this is, this special is a, this message is in charge now. Time. This is officially wartime. That's um, free then. It's free. Isn't it's the government the the cover it, surely. Basic weapons and armor were free they, in the car. They did anyway. miss their 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 uh, shopping episode. I will say that. That's very good. We won't promise that. Puts the DM in the corner. Love it. So I know that our journey was a rocky one, but I'm glad that everything horrible that's happened to everybody else and to, and he looks like teary eyed at you as he's pulled up his hat and it's like, to your, to your son. It's all led us here though. And I'm grateful that you were here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime you need our assistance, Paris. Mm -hmm. We will be there. You proved you, uh, yourself, Karis. You have earned the title of Lord. Hi. And um, <laughs> he pulls out the old, face, then. <laughs> he pulls out the old He's soggy like dripping hand. Pulls out the old soggy dripping hand. Holds it and is like, I don't need this hand anymore, but if you ever need a hand, we're, we're happy to help. And he drops that one on the floor. <laughs> as a Smell but smell less <laughs> these ones. <laughs> so what we'll do then, uh, we'll fast forward a little bit. You are back upstairs in the, in the chambers in the castle proper, and you get to take a long rest. Yes! <gasps> well done. <laughs> That's the first time we've got a long rest. <laughs> yeah. Pre pretty rest much, I so think. Um, yeah. yeah, that was that was pretty dramatic. <laughs> you, you've been on some level of exhaustion since this entire chapter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, since episode two, when uh, you got me drunk. No, no, sorry. Episode like three or four, when we got to uh, Calaman. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> drinking guys. Let's yeah. drink. drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the next day, uh, you find Bakaris. He's claimed a, a modest meeting room down the hall from the council chamber which was marred originally by Lord Soft's attack. Uh, the room holds little more than a long table uh, covered in reports and maps and diagrams and all kinds of things. Um, though it does have these really tall floor-to-ceiling windows which offer a stunning view of the city and the harbour beyond. You, you, as you come into the, into the room, uh, Bakaris stands by a window gazing toward the horizon. Uh, from a seat at the table, Marshal Vendry has arrived and she glances up at you, nods, uh, and then goes back to pouring over some maps. Darrett is also there. Um, Bakaris, while you've been organising everything, um, just to clarify that mm -hmm. Darrett will be given uh, a contingent mm -hmm. of several hundred soldiers for him to take command of. Which is pretty much unprecedented. So it's war well done, times. Yeah. It is war times. Um, a number of the ships have been secured, and you will depart at night tonight, um, and you will head to a secluded cove, which is called Wrecker's Edge, and that lies at the southeastern shore of the northern wastes. Uh, and this is where all of you will disembark. Once you're all in disembark, you will then take the lead. You are the special forces unit. You will go off into your own adventures. Darrett will remain behind 
with a contingent of troops. And this is all because a uh, part of the dragon army has broken away and headed north. The rest of them have stayed in position. Um, and the last thing that Lord Bakaris does while you're in this chamber is that uh, Fizzwiz. Oh, right. Uh, he calls Fizzwiz over and goes, uh, I received something that I was told to give you from a messenger from Wyhen. Oh, um, they are the magic right. shopkeeper here. And he hands you a scroll. Oh, um, thank you. Um, and I will, um, open it there, not feeling the pressure to hide anything from the chorus. Okay. Uh, you unravel the note. It's a very short note. Um, it says Fizzwiz or Master Fizzwiz. Um, I have a message from you from the Towers of High Sorcery. It is urgent that you come to the shop. Huh. And he looks at um, Bacaris and now you can see that like, uh, now that he's had a long rest, he's not shaved. He's kept the beard. And um, Josh isn't here, but I would have had Grom teach him how to like braid the front of braid it like it. Grom has. <laughs> yeah, and, um, nice. it's grown in fast because of his gnomish heritage. And like, he's got, he's almost taken pride in it for once, whereas before it was uh, messy and unkempt. Now that he's rested, he's been through this journey with everyone. Yeah, and he's uh, he's braided it in, in, in a Grom fashion. He looks at Bacaris and he, um, he's now wearing, like he's got his red coat and he's got the shawl of the uh, forest on him, but he's also wearing that um, scald pauldron on one side as well and he's taken <laughs> the bones of the arms and he's like adorned them to it so that it's almost got like um a not necromantic but certainly like um somebody who's not who's trying to like embrace everything that's happened uh, and he's like oh, i guess i um thank you um i should yeah, i'll go straight away uh, but i hope this isn't the last time i, I want to say goodbye before we head off again. Understood. Thank you. So, Fizz, we'll stay with you. What do you want to do? You going to go straight uh, yeah, over to I'll... Wyans? Yeah, I'll notify these guys that I need to go over to uh, Wyans and that it's something to do with the Majors of High Sorcery, and then I will, um... yeah, I'll depart for there, really. Okay. Is anyone going with him? I I'm going to stay at the castle and study the maps of the northern uh, reaches. I don't think Shunin will go with him. Figure out where the city of lost names is. Yep. Shunin will go with Fizzwiz because she normally accompanies him and things as she goes, you know, or stretch my legs. If he wants some company, then Fulin will go with him. Yeah. Yeah, for me and Hope, and he holds like the rat, and he's like, yeah, yeah, please. I'm very happy to share this experience with you all as you've shared so much with me so far. Awesome. Okay, so you leave for the, from the castle, go straight to the magic shop. Again, we'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, yeah. You find her shop, you know the way there now. Uh, you open a door, the little bell rings. Ding -a -ding. <laughs> Smiles. Because last time he came in and that happened, he didn't. <laughs> ah, Master Fizzwiz, you have returned. I trust you Hi. got my my message. I did, uh, and he holds out um, the scroll. He holds it out. He's like, um, "I was allowed to open this one, I assume." Uh, very much so. But I must say, I don't have good news for you. My contacts at the Tower of High Sorcery in Weyruff have denied your request to travel there. Oh, sorry, the music suddenly got all loud. <laughs> That's okay. My end. Uh, <laughs> Have denied, I just turned the radio down. Yeah. Uh, denied your request to travel there and participate. So basically, my co I'll start again. My contacts at the Tower of High Sorcery in Weyruth have denied your request to travel Sorry. there and participate in the test of High Sorcery. The threat of the Dragon Army is too great and the Orders don't want to be perceived as taking sides in the conflict. Um, However... 
the head of the conclave, uh, the mage Parsalian, has granted Parsalian. you a special exception. Oh, Wayan offers you a. Uh, she then Wayan offers you a simple brooch, studded with black, red, and white stones. The symbol of the mages of high sorcery. He has allowed you to practice magic as a provisional member of the mages of high sorcery. The time of your test will be decided after the dragon army's threat has passed. But until then, this token represents the conclave's blessing. Mm. So congratulations, provisional mage. <gasps> oh, and he smiles. Well, he looks, he looks, hey, he looks at the guys around well him, reaches and takes it, and he's like, like wears it proudly, like it instantly pins it on. He's like, I am... Um, the, this war, I understand why they don't want to be seen as taking sides, but it's going to get a lot of people hurt. And if I can do what I can to help protect and save other people, and he looks at the group and uh, protect my friends, I will I will do it. And I will uh, try and bring honor to the majors of High Sorcery. Thank you, you, can by see the her, way. She, kind of, uh, she, she puts her arms on the, on the counter and she kind of looks down at you. And you, she's kind of slightly warned to you over time. And she has a kind of uh, smirk grin on her face. Um, you can see, let's put her up on the screen. If this works, mm -hmm. there you go. You can see her there. She's, she's never impressed by anyone, but she's manages, <laughs> you manages to create a, little, a slight smile on her face for you. Um, <laughs> and then she says, now buy something or get out. <laughs> Actually... Um... And he smiles. He's like, actually, I was, uh, I was after a. Um, we have some things um, which I don't know if you're interested in. And he lists out like the things like the salt and pepper shakers and all the like loot that we found and the mithril armor and stuff that nobody seems to want. Um, I'm <laughs> uh, looking to increase um, my spell knowledge. Um, I've been quite limited at the moment with uh, being able to practice uh, new rituals and stuff, but. Um, uh, it would be quite handy if I could get hold of a few uh, scrolls that I could transcribe. Okay, you can uh, have a browse in the scroll section if you wish, and if you have the coin. And that will do offline. That's great. Yeah. So you, you let me know what you want, and we if you've got the if you've got the dosh, you can have it. Awesome. Uh, do you want me to get rid of equipment here and sell it to her, or um, are we wanting to do that? We'll do that else? offline. That's fine. We'll, t we'll tally it up, agree with, the, agree with the group, and we'll sort that out. And then finally... Um, cool. No, it's, it's like he just smiles, and if, uh, if it's their embarkment to leave, he's like, thank you. Um, I really, really like your dress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just as I was starting to like you. And he, he's like almost it's like doing that with the feathers as well that he's wearing. Because she's wearing black feathers, and he's now wearing like red and brown ones. <laughs> he's wearing feathers. Matching. Yeah, he's all about that. <laughs> right. So Man, he's it. not really matching with the giant skull pauldron on. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's looking pretty necromancer, if I'm being perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone's so got to keep an eye on Fizzwiz or else. <laughs> he's, he, you've, you've turned into this mad, mad witch doctor who happens to be wearing a space marine pauldron. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wait till you see yeah. what's coming next. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, we'll fast forward again. It is now night time. Uh, all of you start. Um, you can see the soldiers. There are people kind of building up crates, getting supplies onto these boats, these ships, uh, and eventually you, as a team, uh, make your way past all these people. Some of the faces you recognise. Uh, as survivors from Vogler, uh, Hawk, your sister is there, uh, wishing you well. And as you pass, some of them are, are a bit sorrowful to see you go. Some of them are smiling. Some people are like kind of cheering and clapping. And every now and then you, you feel a pat on your back as these some of these strangers who feel that they know you are giving you your farewells. And at the very edge of the docks, uh, for one last time, you see both Bakaris and Marshal Vendry standing at the end of the docks. If there's anything you wish to say, you can say it now. Been a pleasure, Bakaris. 
I'd like Get to up. see you grow. You've grown. And then he grabs his stomach. You've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I cheer and I pass him for the last time the bottle of rum, say, for the old time's sake. And right. we both take a swig. It's a little swig, though. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> I'll, I'll just say um, the, the previous council didn't really do much for the refugees from, from Vogler. I, I'm sure you will do better, Bakaris. And I, I'm, I will do all that I can for your son once this mission is over. Mm -hmm. I really mean it when I say you have my sword. Thank you, York. You... That's Solaris of Mythos. Mm -hmm. Lord Garus. Solaris of Mythos. She then wishes him safe travels and good luck. <laughs> and then I guess Fizzwiz comes by. <laughs> Like just straight up yeah. knees, gives him a hug. He's like, "Thank you. Um, look after the city." I will look out for yourselves. Yeah, I believe in you. <laughs> well, all of us here are counting on the lot of you. To continue being what you have already been the heroes you are i'll do what i can here till we meet again <laughs> you hear the uh familiar voice of darrett as he calls to you all from the ship so come on we've got a lot of uh, a long journey ahead and you see him salute Marshal Vendry, and in turn salutes Lord Bicaris, and he disappears back onto the boat. I think with that, his would look at Schilling. He's like, "Come on, I've never seen a crow's nest before!" And like grabs her hand and just starts running onto the ship. <laughs> so we need to be you quick. See, you see Fizz get onto the boat. Uh, sorry, you see Fling get onto the boat, and, and he's just like saying, "Oi, oi, that is not braced. Come on, that rope is." Absolutely <laughs> slack. Get it tired. Uh, I'll, I'll wander over to Derek and uh, and just say, uh, so uh, how are your studies with the oath going, Derek? Uh, can you recite to me the twenty-seven <laughs> ways for correctly cleaning a, a horse's tuck, <laughs> And you, you see him. He kind of like takes in a big, deep breath, like, almost like a sigh, and he's like, uh, uh, I'm, 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 uh, yes, not yet. <laughs> Don't worry, Derek. We have this he whole journey drink. ahead of us to, to <laughs> knuckle down. <laughs> yes. You um, see that the smile kind of fades. <laughs> the the one thing as the camera pans more to to the boat and away from the dock, uh, you just see Bakaris uh, sort of <laughs> waving the soldiers on, and then looking out into the water, thinking of his son. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Right in the heart. You see us waving to you, Bakaris, and saluting. Yeah. So then, yeah, as Randy as Randy says, we get the the final scene as the credits come up. Um, water, water is uh, sloshes, uh, and you hear the wood creaks as the ships depart. Um, oh, just trying to turn that music off. We still got the, the shot music. So the water sloshes and the wood creaks as, the, as all the ships depart. I think you've got three ships from Calaman's docks in the dead of night. The citizens gathered to bid farewell to loved ones soon fade from view. And the ship cuts through the dark waters of Calaman Bay, sailing to perilous shores under cloudy skies. Yes. And with that, congratulations, you have successfully completed chapter two. <laughs> And you are now level up to six level. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. You survived. <laughs> Please tell me Randy's coming back well as another character. Done. 
everybody. Sadly not, no. We, we, have, but, we, we, but, we'll see Randy again in a different game. Yeah. Uh, but for for now, uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's. Uh, oh, I'll push this for a few seconds. I just, came, I just came back to it to let you know. I'm thinking of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this was the Bacares Redemption arc. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I was ready to be Merc the moment you saw me, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to you guys talk, and I was like, oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> yeah, that was... I, yeah, no, I we'd that never review. do that straight away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are we rolling hit points now? Awesome. Now, uh, we'll do that. We, we can do it now if you want to, if you've got the time. I, I, I don't want to do it now because I'm on a... He's on the jet lag still. He's on the jet lag yeah. still. Uh, <laughs> right. So we will do that offline for a change. And we will uh, be back in two weeks' time for our, the start of our brand new chapter. Uh, minus Ooh. Randy, unfortunately. Um, oh, Randy. And for you, Randy. one last time... We will roll that VT, starring Randy, and we'll see Bye, you again soon. Bye. 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 Trona!